Welcome everybody to the Crossfire Podcast, where I just reminded everybody that they were doing a show and we weren't live. It doesn't mean we, we didn't we know. We completely forgot. <laughs> but the show was going on. I said, guys, let's record this. What do you say we do that? Uh, no, it's Friday night, guys. Everyone's had a long week. New games are out. New rumors are out. People are talking. People are agreeing. Some are not. We're going to talk about it tonight and figure it all out. Let me start with the one and only. He's very opinionistic. A crap gamer. Crap. Welcome to the I'm show, not opinionistic at all. I don't know who the hell you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. You I'm have no opinion. Going. I'm just, I go with the flow, man. I'm a sheep. I, uh, I buy Apple <laughs> products without oh. even caring what they are. Low blow. Uh, I love you know Sony what? just because they sell more. Sony fan. Justin right. Bieber is my god because he sells the most. So obviously I got to like him too. So yeah, it's, just, it's insane. I just, you know, I'm not, what can I say, man? I'm, I'm very non-opinionated, very non-argumentative, very no. good flow. You yeah. sound like you're a man of the people, crap. I am a man for the people as well. So, ah. Yes. All right. Well, that's a new guy. I can't wait to see that on the channel. Crap. I want to see that new slogan. That sounds oh, it's, awesome. It's, it's going to be great. It, it, you know, I'm working on it right now. It's a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a rebrand, but you know, it's happening. We're, we're in the midst of it. So we all got to reinvent ourselves at some point. Crap. I'm right there with you, buddy. Kumbaya. Listen, I have a full set of candles on my channel. Well, that's all just get, we're all just gamers here. That's right. We're all just here. What you guys oh, don't yeah. realize at home is everybody in the panel is actually holding hands at this very time. Nice. They all are. Cool. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A big yeah. circle. Yes. yes. Come by. <laughs> nice, Alan. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go right to our, our lead singer, Alan Walsh, fullthrottle.com. Alan, how the hell are you, buddy? I, I'm doing well. You know what, Mooch? I can't help but be excited. I saw you got your new PC this thank week. You, You've you. been all in on Xbox Play anywhere, I, I'd imagine. <laughs> Not really. Really. Sarcastically. Yeah, sarcastically. sarcastically. <laughs> I've, I I've played like about 25 minutes of Forza. Other than that, it's been used just for YouTube so far. Um, <laughs> but I do appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Uh, and then I've got Singular Boom Bustic, who not only buys everything, he's going to inform you of each receipt tonight. Boom, how the hell are you doing? I I'm doing fine. And you know what? Being the detective that I know that I am yes. secretly, I know why crap is devastated. It's because the Ravens lost to the Browns. Oh! Sports! Oh, 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 that, that is low. That, that's, yeah. low. Yeah. that's worse yeah. than that apple jab. I just not only, not only did they lose, but they lost probably the most boring game I've ever witnessed was, in my life. Yeah. That yeah, I, 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 ha I had to seek some sort of revenge, but yeah. you know what? I'm happy to be here once again. Friday nights would not be the same without this awesome group of people that we're hanging out with so let's get the show on the road i completely agree and then i've got xbot 448 and let me tell you something folks if you want to know what's going on with anything black ops turn your speakers <laughs> up because xbox got a mouthful trust me what's up buddy How you Guys, doing what, what kind of twilight zone are we living in when i was there for a launch of a call of duty game uh i i gotta say it's all it's all O Snap's fault. But Mooch, I want to say now that I got you uh, with a mic, headset, and everything like that, congratulations on your Mooch graphics card because I saw kind of like what was going on on Twitter. <laughs> so now the 2080 is, is no longer called the 2080. It is the Mooch graphics card from now on. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm kind of honored. I'm kind of wiping my own brow right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, but let me say, let's get to our special guests here. We have two great guests with us. One's actually a returning guest that was just here last week. So shady. Welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing? I'm the two-time, back-to-back, consecutive weeks. A lot of you at home playing your precious exclusives, your Forza exclusives, your Spider-Man exclusives. You're playing your Assassin's Creeds. Maybe you're playing Call of Duty Blackout. Well, I was out guesting on the Crossfire podcast. Two weeks in a row, bringing you the <laughs> biggest and best gaming news each and every week. Let's do this. Nice, Shady. Good to have you back, buddy. <laughs> I totally appreciate it. And then last but certainly not least, he's also back. It was hard to book him, but he's got a lot going on. Enrique, welcome back to the show <clears throat> from Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. Buddy, how you been? I have been great. Happy to be here on a Friday night. And yes, I've been very busy. I've had just moved into a new house, had a, uh, our fourth no, baby number four. Whew. And yeah, it's been a lot. It's been a lot moving God. and having a kid. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise anyone to do that. Not in that. Not in that, not in that order and in that <laughs> short time frame, right, Enrique? That's unbelievable. No, I, we literally closed on our on our house September first, and my wife went to labor the next day. Whoa! Wow! That's unbelievable. And then I was still I was still packing boxes. 
Because we were talking about it. We were like, hey, when are you going to be able to get on a show? You're like, hey, you know what? Maybe we can work this week out. We can work that week out. And then you're like, oh, yeah. nope. Wife's in labor. We're gone. Boom. That was gone. <laughs> then, yeah. it was like, then it was like, what's going on? You won't believe it, dude. Everything worked out with the sale. We're moving. I'm like, holy shit. That is unbelievable. Within four weeks, your life completely changed. And I will say changed for the better. Yes, so, it has definitely changed for the better. You know Although I mean? my gaming has suffered, though. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, at least you have a good excuse. My gaming has suffered. And the only thing I can blame is swinging left and right all over New York City. <laughs> I've been swinging everywhere for crying out loud. I told you um, to say screw I know, that game. I know. Man. I'm, like, I'm almost damn. done. I'm so close. I can, I can taste it. But Mooch, Mooch, hasn't your experience been great? Of course great. it's been great. <laughs> I can't it's say otherwise. Exclusive. It has to be great. Great. And I expect everyone on this panel to say the same thing. I thought it was all right. Oh. <laughs> Man of the people. I appreciate it. Um, Listen, guys, here's the good news. A lot of people this week, they came around, okay? Because weeks and weeks ago, Mooch was sitting here. I kind of felt like I was alone on this, this soapbox, standing there screaming, blackout is going to be huge. And everybody are. still – yeah, well, I got a lot of people around me, <laughs> all right? I don't know what they're doing down there, but they're listening. But I really got to say, I think this game had a huge release. And me and Crap were kind of having a couple of jokes back and forth. Even if people weren't buying it and they were getting it mooched, Guess what? It still counts because they're going to be in the lobby to play. Here's the deal. This is a 800-pound gorilla that constantly, every year, and me included, I'm guilty years in past. I said, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. And guess what? I was still psyched for this year. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now, Xbot, I'm going to go to you because I know right now, if I don't go to you first, you're not going to have any finger fingernails left on your, your hand. You're, you're probably <laughs> chopping at the bit, buddy. What has happened? You did an immediate live stream at midnight last night, and I heard that you thought it was, in quotations, okay. It, Can it, you elaborate? It was, it was uh, hashtag fun is what I will say. Uh, I, I was joined by O Snaps, and, yeah, she decided she was going to get the game. I was like, you know, it's going to be ready at midnight. I know yeah. we're not going to be sleeping anytime soon. I was like, why not stream it? And I got to say, I, I, I went in with her. At first, it was a little bit rough the way any launches, but yeah, within 20 it. minutes, we were able to get in together into a squad, and, you know, we, we were playing, and it was it was fun. Um, we landed in, a, uh, I believe, the asylum, and they had zombies there which is a good addition Love to it. a battle royale because all of a sudden I landed, I was completely had no weapons or anything. I had three zombies running after me like right off the bat. So they, they get you, they get your like heart going. If you land in the right places, they get your heart going, get your blood pumping really quick. Um, when it comes down to it, a lot of people, of course, they're comparing PUBG and Fortnite to, to, right. to what do you, uh, how to would Black you compare it? I, I would say, like I said, it's fun and it's a good alternative to play a game with O Snaps as as long as because you know her, she's all PUBG all all the time and uh, she had a lot of fun as well. So um, it's a good alternative, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure if this game will keep me keep my attention the way PUBG did for so long. Uh, have there's just tasted, have you tasted the crack that is a victory in BR yet? Uh, no, no, <laughs> that's uh, an addictive thing. It's an addictive thing. Once you taste that, man, it could be real good, real well, fast. Here's the other thing, though, but I gotta say, though, Call of Duty, I was like, yo, let's get this chicken dinner. Come on, people, let's go. And, well, and look, that's what's laughing at me. But <laughs> battle, battle Royale, okay, for all of us console folks, was a new thing when PUBG came out. So I totally get where it was that new flavor, right? So, like you said, is it easy for it to take the place of that initial time we all kind of sat there and did the one versus 100 in that kind of sediment? No, that, that may not take that same memory. But what it's done is it's taken our beloved PUBG and it's taken some of the quick, fast-acting, fast-scope a uh, movement that is in Fortnite that PUBG has been lacking. And I think they just meshed them together and they've got a hell of a product. I really think they have a hell of a product right here. I you mean, know, I was going to say at, at the end of the day, it's call of duty. Right. And if you look at, and I, I know we have call of duty faithfuls, like, you know, crap gamer people in the chat and stuff like that. Right. Uh, but I'm talking about the majority of like the call of duty community. Activision likes to cater to a certain like age demographic, and that's around the same age demographic as Fortnite. I, I don't really think this is gonna like take over in terms of those hardcore kind of like PUBG people. Yeah. 
But I think it's going to start tugging at the rope and uh, with Fortnite kind of going back and forth when it comes to gamers, man. I, I really think it can do well, that. I'm shocked in the chat. Lethal Papa, shout out to Lethal. He says, PUBG is trash compared to Blackout. Fact. And I mean, listen, Lethal. Lethal Lethal's a Call of Duty fan anyway, though. So I'm going <laughs> to take that with a grain right there, man. I right, Listen, I've known Lethal a long time, and I'm not saying he probably is a Call of Duty fan, but he's not like one of those obnoxious, like, I, I don't know what you, are you guys hey. playing new games? I'm playing Call of Duty from last year. He's I not never that called guy. him obnoxious. Noxious. He is a really cool no, guy. He's not. I'm just saying. He knows what he's talking about. I'm with you. I'm with you, Lethal. Um, <laughs> now, who else has actually played it? Crap, have you gotten a chance to play it today? No, I was installing. All right. I didn't know if you got a chance. Uh, Mr. Boom, I'm so happy about that. No, I, I, I skipped on it, brother. I didn't win it in the contest. And I told, I, I, I'm oh, a man of my word. Right. I'm a man of my word. I said, if I didn't win it, I wasn't getting it. Let's and see if that word has an expiration date. I'm just checking the back <laughs> of the box. Well, um, you know what? The thing is this uh, if, if it's thrown in front of me during Black Friday for 30 bucks, I may consider pulling the trigger. But because I'm a story campaign guy and I, I know what's going to happen, I'm going to play it. And, and guess what? I'm excited. That commercial sold me on Blackout. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Here's the problem. It's going to be a game I'm going to pick up. I'm going to I'm going to probably put five, six, seven hours into it, and I'm going to go back to playing Assassin's Creed or well, something else. I would like the I would like the uh, the jury to know that Mr. Boomstick is not a battle royale fan to begin no, with, though. No, that's correct. Yes. Right. I mean, you yes. have to state that because if you don't like it. You don't yeah, like it. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I played PUBG. I thought it was okay. I maybe two hours into it. And I'm like, I bought the game. I yeah. support the company. Goodbye. Uh, I played Fortnite. Right. I played maybe about 10 matches. Like, okay, this is not for me. You know, the building aspect. No, yeah. whatever. You know, but I do, I have played Call of Duty online before. And this does interest me. The issue is that with so much stuff out now, I, I it would just be literally throwing $60 away for it to sit on my hard drive. You no, know, boom, boom, check this out. You know what would keep my interest more? And, and I know I'm probably going to get lit up in the chat. If it had a campaign. If this game had a story, eh. I, I would be a lot happier. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm right. I would have I would have been with you. I, I, I got to say, and I, dude, I'm coming. I'm coming from the outside. I, I'm coming into the store called Call of Duty right now. And I'm, you know, I'm looking at the offerings and stuff like that. If it had a campaign, I can guarantee you that after I played those three rounds of Blackout today, I would have went into the campaign. I would have got more kind of like immersed in the game. And I, right. I probably would have came out and did a couple more rounds of Blackout. But as it is, it was three rounds and I'm good yeah. for the night. I'll go back. Uh, I'll go back to Horizon 4. You know Let what I'm saying? Take a few yeah, seconds. Like a six hour campaign. Do you have do you have the game? I, I do have the game. I didn't get a chance to play it last night. Okay. I made the I made the executive decision and instead, and I watched uh, Doctor Disrespect stream his to fifty thousand live viewers. It was wow. over the top. Uh, he loves the game. This is going to be massive. The community watching him is like watching like a stadium full of sports fanatics. Ninja on went favorite too. Team. It's crazy. Yes, yes, yeah. he has, and he's even more popular and bigger. But like, it was it was awesome just to watch. I put in huge hours into the beta, though. I knew that. Um, the whole battle royale was for me. I didn't want to play PUBG because it's just awkward and janky and broken and it's functional at best. Let's be real. It's functional. I didn't want to play it. And Fortnite wasn't getting the job done. Blackout, man, that feeling you get when you're in that top 10, your heart is pounding, your palms are sweating. You don't even know why. It's just like, man, I, I, I love online games. I play them all the time. I'm very competitive in them. But Blackout just feels it's like adrenaline pumping man it is good anyone out there i recommend it if you're a fan of that mode especially it's good times man and i look forward Jay, to i agree it. i agree with you i like i like your pitch there to be honest and the one thing xbox said that he kind of said as a negative i i gotta turn around turn it into a positive he's like you know it's it's, it's call of duty that's the thing and i think that's the one thing crap said to me the thing of reason we think people ultimately will like this game is because that twitchy fast response type of shooter is what made call of duty so famous in the beginning and the now you have a mode insane. right now you have a mode that caters to that and what we wanted i want to say something real quick before i want to get to enrique real, real quick in his opinion chat we've got 308 people here i know each of you guys have at least 100 or more followers on twitter so weed out that link let's get some more gamers butts in the seats enrique have you gotten a chance to uh, either play the beta or have you purchased uh, uh, Call of Duty or is this not your bag? Uh, I didn't touch the beta and I haven't purchased it yet, but Sushi <laughs> might have sold me on the game now. Yeah, he did a hell of a sales pitch. That was a very yeah, good sales That was great pitch. because I, you know, he said you're dead on with 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 uh, uh, PUBG. It's janky, but and I heard other people say that 
Call of Duty, uh, the uh, Battle Royale mode for Call of Duty is like PUBG minus the jank. And I'm like, hmm, I could actually maybe get into that. And then so shit, you just told me you just totally sold the game to me. Well, so. Enrique, aren't you a huge PUBG fan? I love PUBG. Yeah, I mean, that's like yeah. your bag. That's definitely yeah, like your even, game. Leaving with the jank and the lag and you know the pop in and all the other stuff that we had to deal with early on. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, just uh I think so shady said, you know, when you get to that top ten, you you know, your your palms are sweaty, you know, you you might be shaking a little bit, kind of a la, you know, uh Metroid back in the days when you beat Mother Brain, you're trying to beat the uh yeah, you know, I'm from blowing up, and you, you're, you know, you're parkouring. But I mean, it, it was uh, that feeling, uh, that that adrenaline rush from PUBG. Um, yeah, I love it. And and if Call of Duty is PUBG minus a jank, I'm yeah, I'm gonna go pick it up. You know, Enrique, I gotta say something real quick. When it comes to comparing PUBG and Blackout, um, there was a couple things. First off, I wish the Blackout map was bigger. Because I feel like one of the things I really love about PUBG is the map is so big that you and your team come to like real strategy when it comes to breaking down how you're going to get into the smaller mm -hmm. circles, where you're going to go. In Blackout, there's less of that. And I think that yeah. that is one thing because that is the hook that got me in with PUBG is really yeah. kind of thinking things out and thinking how you're going to approach things. And when it comes to blackout, blackout, it's more action in your face, go all the time and think about things later. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I like the strategy aspect more with PUBG, but that's not saying I didn't have some hashtag. Well, fun, man. right. And Xbox, listen, here's the other thing I just kind of want to put out there. Tell me if you guys are going to roll with me on this one. There's certain times a year that a game comes out and you just feel like it's that game season. It's it's Call of Duty season. I mean, all of us have been doing this for a decade better, right? It's like, it, even if you skipped a couple of years, maybe you just got it later. Maybe you didn't buy it one year. Maybe you went two years without it. You know, that's fine. But it's Call of Duty season, and this is something where they're coming out. They made an effort to take something, which is Battle Royale, which is we all know how Fortnite's doing. We don't have to go down that path. But it's a game that, you know, like I know crap likes Battle Royale. I just know he likes it because we played PUBG a number of times. I know he played it a lot with Graves. I know he likes that game mode. I know. I also know that many people, not just crap gamer, don't like Fortnite because they feel like with the building, it takes them a little bit out of the shooting mechanic. And there's a little bit of, there is a little bit of a kitty, cartoony, corny aspect to it. However, a lot of those things are the reason it sells so well. But th this is the game that I think gets the crap gamers back into the battle royale world, right? Crap. I mean, th these are words that you've said. That I think yeah, I mean, it's, it's, well, it's a smooth, it's a, it's a triple A experience in that genre. So we haven't really had that. You and know, it's PUBG ish more than Fortnite, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't even consider Fortnite to be triple A. I just realistically, no. that's just. I'll uh, agree with you that. Know, yeah. So you know, I, 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 I'm looking forward to actually being able to dive in and play the game. Uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, my internet is kind of shitty. So two Xboxes having to download it. And I think it might've just finished a little bit ago, but so yeah. I haven't had a chance to play it. And, uh, but I'm looking forward to playing it tonight. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be on tonight. The only thing me and crap are going to decide is if we're going to stream it afterwards. So stay tuned. We'll let you, we'll tweet it out and let you guys know if we are afterwards, but we're definitely gonna be playing it tonight. That's for damn sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, Alan, listen, you said yours is on the way. I mean, have you played the beta? I did play the beta and yeah, like I liked it. I liked it. Um, I had some. I had a lot of weird lag issues when I was playing it, though. But the overall feel of the mode and just having Call of Duty mechanics yes. in a battle royale environment—that's what sells it to me. And then you have this map that takes, you know, so many iconic landmarks from the Black Ops series. You've got stuff from zombies in there, and it's just—it—it it really is like, a, like almost like a love letter to Call of Duty fans. But yeah. also to those battle royale enthusiasts who, you know, they want an experience that's like PUBG, but without all the the flaws, without all the issues. And I yes. think Blackout, the majority of people I've spoken to, they love it. They really do, and I, I'm excited for it. Well, Yo, I'll tell you, Alan, if Alan, Enrique, Enrique, if Shady didn't sell it to you, I got news for you. Alan just sold it. That was a well, hell of a, and he's a Forza guy. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Well, Alan, I definitely agree that the the whole love letter to the Call of Duty fans because you have like New Nuketown, the Asylum, all the different areas on the map, kind of their their callback to yeah. other Call of Duties. My whole thing is that doesn't really do anything for me because the last Call of Duty that I actually owned was Call of Duty Two. 
Uh, See, yeah, that's oh wow, yeah. that may yeah. be a you that's, problem though, Xbox. That's, because, that's, hey, hey, there's that's more of me out there, Xbox. okay, man. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. It's just a really cool feeling today. when you're coming up on these familiar maps from all these other different angles, and no you have to realize it. it's like, oh, this is Nuketown because it doesn't instantly jump out at you. Same with a lot of like the mansion map and stuff. You right. kind of walk up awesome. on them, and then you you realize like, oh, it's this map that you played yeah. on, but because it's not contained, it's just a neat feeling. Like the yeah. game is really cool, and in traditional Call of Duty, you never get into big open field uh gunfights where all you have is a couple rocks and trees as cover like it does add a a, a totally different flavor yeah like if the map shrinks around those construction sites or in nuketown or the diner listen i took a few minutes today when i was uh, maybe i shouldn't be doing this while you're driving folks but i had the phone on and i was watching ign they had bobby <laughs> 1984 who's probably one of the most entertaining guys right that he's IGN funny has. That guy's i love funny. him yeah. i absolutely love bobby he only does like Call of Duty stuff for the most part. For the most part, that's his that's his thing on the channel. But every time there's a Call of Duty release, boom, he's on there and he's doing his thing. I enjoyed it. And like much like Shady was just saying, he's like, where do you want to land? Where do you want to land? And nobody can make their mind up that he's playing with. So he was like, we're landing at the light. I think it was a lighthouse or the light tower. And he's like, and the other person was like, I've been playing this thing for like 20 hours. Where's the light tower? He's like, follow me. And they land in this little crevice part of the map. And they go in this lighthouse, and it has like it has weapons galore. They load up, they go out, they made it into the top ten. Uh, they didn't make it to the end, but nonetheless, just like the game, like like you were saying, Shady, where sometimes in PUBG the circle condensed and condensed and condensed, and at the end it's just it's just me and crap versus bot and Shady, and the only thing we got between us is like a, a wheat grain field. It's like come on, on man, like what am I supposed to hide behind here? Let me hide behind crap. Oh, he's going great. What's left? <laughs> great. So, great. And uh, realistically, you know, this gives us this gives you more options. It's and, and you know what, X Spot? Let me say something. The reason I said it was a you problem is I again shady kind of nailed it. I I see Nuketown and I see these other parts of the map. And man, I just get nostalgia, right? I get flashbacks. It to is a hell awesome. of a drug. It is. You said it, it crap. <laughs> It makes you, you want to you put know, your, mooch. Oh, I will, to, listen, I, that kind of nostalgia wants to make you put your feet on the couch and kick someone else's couch. All right, that's you what got, you kind of want to mooch, do with it. Mooch, yeah. I will say my favorite place to land on the map is the asylum. That is one creepy that's, as hell. That's where the zombies place are. Place to land, man. I I absolutely love. So, I, I Xbox, love the atmosphere around. Explain, that, to the, yeah. explain to the crowd and the audience and myself, please, because I've only landed there once, and I know I know what it is. You've played it for multiple hours. What? What is it that uh, what triggers the the zombies? Um, well, if as as you're coming out of the the planes, as you you know open up your your yeah. flying squirrel suit or whatnot, you'll see these lights, like these lined lights on the map, and those are the places where the zombies are spawning for for that for that iteration that match. Okay, so you can go there, and what happens is you can go there with your squad and, and whatnot, and you can take out the zombies. I believe there's one kind of like zombie boss kind of like hanging around there. Okay. You take him out and you'll get like an overpowered weapon from that. So there's an incentive to go there and take them out. That's they're, awesome. They're For not example, easy. Every though. every single zombie you kill drops a random piece of loot as well. And like you said, that big boss drops something nice. uh, real, real yeah. nice for you. But each zombie will drop something. But you, you're you drawing attention to yourself, of course. I was just going to say that. Yeah, everybody's hearing else. you firing your guns and everything like that. I actually, when I went in... I, I left with a a, a fifty cal, <laughs> and I went I went for the mountains right after that. Like I grabbed my fifty cal and I and I ran. And there was like a whole a whole bunch of zombies trying to follow me. You get to a certain point, and they're just like, nah, never mind. And they just they turn back around and go, you know, back to their area or whatnot. But it it is creepy. The asylum it's all run down. You're hearing creepy noises. You got you know the cemetery like right there it, it that is a really cool can you get into atmosphere. the can you get into the vehicles xbox I'm so sold <laughs> They are, uh, the vehicles are great too, like that quad, the physics on the shocks and everything when you're driving it around, it felt surprisingly yeah, good. And, and they drive Call of Duty. they drive like how vehicles in Halo drive as well. Almost, you push, yeah. You push forward on one stick and you can look around with the other and you'll go you'll go in the direction of wherever you look wherever you look. And you know me with Halo. I can drive a warthog. So I got on when I got on that that quad. I was a professional kind of like driver right off the bat. And, um, like I said, there are there are definite highlights to this, and I, I'm glad I'm actually glad we got it here because uh, now there's there's another choice when it comes to you know gaming with oh snaps because usually it was just PUBG 
all day. I got her on Forza Horizon 4. She's been playing that as well. So nice. now nice. we're going to have like a three game kind of like decision going on in this house, which we haven't had in a long time. So I'm, I'm really happy for that, man. That's cool. That's very cool. Very cool. I, I think that this game is going to be around for a bit. I hope they keep adding to it. The word on the street is they're going to continue to add to it. Um, I, I think I, so, Mooch. I think I'm, no? like, I'm already looking forward to like the inevitable exosuit mode. Don't don't hate me already. But like the double jumps and the wall runs in a mode like this would really up the pacing even more. And the oh, pacing in this game is just so aggressive. Like I think it I, hedged I'm okay with that. Make it, it make time. it its, make it its own alternate mode so people if they want just an event like a weekend event every now and then something along those lines. Like I think they're going to do some big things with this game. It's 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 going to be good. Well, you know, shout out to Sir X Man in the chat. He says, "Mooch, I wonder if PUBG is going to sue Activision." Sir X Man, they already tried this, and and it, it's it's not going to work. You can't you can't do that. It, it's a game mode. Uh, they went after PUBG went after um, Epic Games, and they lost. You know, when when these companies when they develop something that's new, they create a genre. All right. And that genre, other other developers, other publishers are going to try to go in and make something in that genre. Right. Seeing as how successful PUBG was, you know, going from PC and when it hit Xbox, man, so many people picked it up then it, it was bound to happen. And there's there's nothing they can really do in terms of people creating their own game that that fits that genre, man. Right. No, I totally agree. Listen, how great is it that we're in a, a part of the year, guys, where we're able to talk about games? Uh, you know, it's been it's it's so much, you know, wishful thinking about uh, hardware and this and that, which we're going to get into in, in, in the show as well. But another game that I kind of want to talk about, and we can jump back and forth. So if somebody has anything to add about Black Ops, please do chime in. Uh, we're in the gaming section of the show is AC Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is still very much. You know, you could sit here and say, oh, it's a week, it's two weeks, it's this and that, blah, blah, blah. I've had it for a while. I've played it. I got like seven. You've got a guy on the panel right now in Boomstick. Senor Boombustick has been playing this thing for 75 hours, <laughs> and he has not even broke a sweat yet. No, here's the thing. You know, I'm glad you went to me on this because, yes, I just I checked my stats. I just crossed 75 hours. I'm I'm level 26, um, and I'm thirty only 39% through the game. Wow. And now, and now you say why? Well, you know the problem. The, the problem is there's a lot of sightseeing that goes on. If you've noticed, I take a lot of pictures. I do a lot of videos because you know what? I'm really taken aback by the 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 how gorgeous this game really is. When you see it running in 4K, yeah, and and you're and you 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 know you you get to a, a a spot on top of the map where you're where the eagle does a you know flies around and gives you that 360 degree view. It's stunning. And it and what I think it's what makes it even you know, like crazy stunning is not that what you're seeing that you're standing on or right in front of you. It's, it's the things in the distance. I mean, you could make out ships moving. You could make out other birds flying in the air. I mean, everything just seems so alive. And and if you're a Witcher, and I say this, and I and I actually say this to you, Mooch, because I know you're a Witcher three fan. Yeah. This is basically the Witcher three <laughs> effect. Yeah. Um, you pick up you 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 go to a story mission and you're going. At, let's say, for instance, it's 300 paces away or 3,000 paces away. On the way there, you're gonna see 15 other icons. You know, question marks. You're gonna want to go to. It's a you know a bear cave or you know a fort or a base for for uh, looters. And the gear that you're getting is they, they drop gear like it's going out of style. You if you if you're really into like that collectathon, trying to get the best gear. This game is for you. Uh, and, of course, if you are a story-driven kind of a person, which I am, and I really do dig the single-player uh, aspect of this game, if you're a fan of, let's say, Mass Effect, the new dialogue uh, choices are amazing because you can be an asshole to somebody, and later on that could come back and hurt you, uh, literally, because you know the person that you insulted may bring a gang, and, and you run into them, and now you're fighting. Right. I just think that everything that Ubisoft has done with this game, when you want you want to talk about reinventing the wheel, this is the game. And, and of course, me being a huge 300 fan, um, I you know I, I I'm through the moon with this. And I'm gonna say, and I, I said this pregame, and I want to say it live on the air. Literally, the best opening in gaming that I've ever played. Like that gaming alone, history. Gaming that alone, history. That alone makes me wow. want to just play that. First and foremost, I like how Taser sure. Delight goes, Mooch still doesn't beat Witcher 3. Listen, I got news for you. My great-grandchild might not be able to if they take my save spot. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You I'm, just, I'm lost in the immersion in this game. To speak on the graphics real quick, Mooch, I apologize yep, there. Right, buddy. But, like, I, I I put in almost 30 hours. I'm only level 12 because way too often I'm actually walking my Alexios through the world and through the forest with these really deep, lush, like, oh, flowered God. meadows. So Shady is I, picking flowers in the game. He's got, he's <laughs> got his hand out as you're going through the wheat fields and it's going through his fingers. Like it is, and the lighting just coming through the, it's just so immersive in the way it looks. I don't like to just run around at top speed. I don't do that in real life. I walk everywhere. So I do it in my games a lot of the time. And the, the beauty and absolute attention to detail on everything is staggering. So I'm spending my time, like I said, stopping and smelling almost every flower because it looks phenomenal. I love it. Can no, I just shady. Say oh, go ahead, I, man. I want to say something real quick. I can't come on the show anymore where so shady's on. I, 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 <laughs> I'm, buying two I'm buying two games. <laughs> Enrique's like, I'm 120 short? What the hell's going yeah. on? <laughs> <laughs> I come on the show, I'm losing money. <laughs> Check like, this out. Shady did a great job, and boom, you, you did a great job. You guys already know how I feel about Assassin's Creed the past few years. I, I feel like... They, they lost the spirit of Assassin's Creed, but you guys did a great job on selling this. The only thing is, you guys better get a check from Ubisoft or something, because once Red Dead 2 comes out, all the people that love those story games and stuff like that. In Red Dead, I, I was talking to somebody who was, who was testing the game, right? And they literally got into a fight with a stranger and took his dead body and put it over their campfire. And it is so detailed that literally the body burned up. Like you, you, you destroy your evidence and everything like that in Red Dead from the stuff you have done. Crazy. And the, amount, the amount of detail that they have in Red Dead. Uh, once that game comes out, people are gonna be like Odyssey. What? What? What's an Odyssey? What is say, that? Hold on. One time I killed this guy in Odyssey. I picked him up on my back. I carried him. I tossed him into a bonfire. He burst into flames. No one saw what was going on, and uh, and he walked away. <laughs> And I walked away. So, I mean, same story, just in Assassin's Creed. I, I, That's crazy. No doubt, Red, Red Dead is going to be amazing. But anyone out there that likes a, a deep, long RPG with massive attentions to detail where any one of the random little side quests can all of a sudden turn into a 45-minute yes. you know, like exploration where you're finding new people that you help or you don't, and then those people can come back way later in the game and either help you or not. Like, it is... You know what? Is, we, we, it's a really good game. I, I got to jump in here, guys. Uh, I think X spot i think it was x spot who just said it right now or shady uh, one of you guys just said it this is killing me this you guys may have just altered my entire time right now you guys are like my doc brown <laughs> um let me uh, here, let me explain i was gonna wait and do uh, uh odyssey you know much later i i think one of you just nailed it I i'm concerned now especially with the alana pierce tweet that came out where she said she went in expecting her expectations were through the roof and she said when she left it blasted her expectations out of the water, Red Dead Redemption. It's so where I'm concerned right now is now I'm thinking, not tonight, because tonight's Black Ops 4, you know, reveal the whole thing. It's all right. You know, but starting tomorrow, I think I got to get on AC Odyssey because in the event that Red Dead is that good, and we've heard this from a number of people now, guys, everybody mm -hmm. knows on this panel, we don't really, you know, take Jeff Keeley with the, you know, we, it's a lot of grains. Grain you know before. what I want to do? Well, he said right it too. Now. Yeah, I, I want to take Jeff Keeley, knock him out, and throw him on the bonfire. Is that okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I mean, realistically, guys, if AC Odyssey doesn't hold a candle to Red Dead, I, if, if, you may want to play Odyssey first. You got two weeks, which don't get me wrong, two weeks, you're not going to get 150 hours in. It's the but game, Red both games are so massive, dude. I mean, I, look, let me just say this. You know, Red Dead is going to be what it is, and it's probably yeah. going to be game of the year. It's probably – it's not my game of the year, but it's going to be game of the year for many people. It's going to sell a bazillion copies. But I have to say, and I, and I really – you know, you know I, I don't steer anyone wrong. Anyone that's taken my advice when it comes to games who has always come back and said, you know what, Boom? You are spot on. I am telling you, <laughs> because you're such a Witcher 3 fan, you are literally cheating yourself out of not playing this game. Yeah, no, I can. Let me do a shout out to Yobi Dren Clown. Yobi Dren, who dropped uh, a great super chat. Thank you for that. He says, Hey guys, just wanted to show some peace and love. Peace and love to the entire panel tonight. Got dragged out of work with my co workers to have a drink at a bar. P.S. I dislike 99% of these people. Only <laughs> welcome a few to I can the tolerate. world. <laughs> yeah, Yobi Dren, <laughs> like, welcome to adulthood. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, that's life. But awesome to have you in the chat and even stopping by and showing your support like that. Peace and love right back, man. Um, yeah, realistically, crap. What do you think about that? Is that something where 
Will you have AC Odyssey completed before Red Dead comes out? No, no. I, Are you I, concerned I, that if, if Red Dead is that good, it may steal you away? No, I mean, I get I, if it, if you know, Odyssey's great. Uh, you know, you'll, you, I want to go back to it if, uh, you know, if it's if it's as great as I think it is. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's not really a problem. So, I mean, I would in an ideal world, I'd like to be able to to finish, but I'm not gonna just go and, and go. Oh man, I gotta finish it because, uh, you know, those games can be a little bit grindy and stuff anyway. But uh, if I wanted to, I probably could. I mean, I. I I, I think I took care of Origins in like 35 hours or something, but um, yeah, I you know they they tend to make you have to grind to level up to complete different tasks. So yeah, uh, th that could be the same here. I don't know. I'm not far enough in it yet. Uh, there's too much other stuff out, you know. So uh, I love the game though. I think it's great. I think they did a really good job. They transitioned it full on to a um, an RPG, which I think was a really good direction to take yes. that game in. And I feel like uh, that that's what they needed to do because the whole uh, the older formula was a little bit stale. Yep, and, I agree. And, and it seemed very because it was created on the 360 and the PS3. Obviously, they needed to update it. And those had limitations, uh, you know, that the obviously the Xbox one PS4 don't have right now. So uh, they really did a good job with that. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's probably what it is now is probably what they always intended it to be but didn't have the capabilities to do it. Right. So I, I think it's great. I think that uh, what they did originally was good, and then it kind of fell apart with the story, yeah. Yeah. the whole present-day Animus Desmond thing, and then once they killed them off. Like, I wish they just stopped doing that Animus, animus stuff. Like, yes. just have one of them be yeah. a present-day one at some point to tie it all together or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that that's kind of cheesy, the way that they do the animus stuff still. So, you know, they take uh, you out of the game. I agree. Crap. Yeah. I would say crap. I, I am one of those people that, um, I, I believe like Assassin's Creed two and brotherhood were probably the best in the series, but oh, here, those, here's, those are great games. Yeah. Here, here's the deal. See, this is what needs to go on in the community more, even though I feel like, you know, Assassin's Creed has lost it for me in terms of what I was looking for in those games. I am happy that this one is making Shady happy, is making Crap happy, is <laughs> making Boom happy. Mooch is going to get into it, and I'm not yeah. telling him, hey, guys, what the hell are you doing? No, it needs to be like that one so many years ago, and that's it. Like, it, it lost me. But I'm happy that, you know, this game is out there for other people to enjoy. And yeah. if you guys like where it's going, more power to you, man. Yeah. Now, I mean, so the people that are in the same boat right now are me and Alan. I haven't played it. I have it. Alan has it on order. It's on the way. And Enrique, I heard you want to kind of chime in there. <laughs> have you? No, he, 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 I think he was kind of agreeing with crap. Do you see? And this is why I'm back, because you guys can anyone that listens to the show knows that I'm, I'm not a huge Assassin's Creed fan. Enrique, are you kind of a little bit more intrigued with Assassin's Creed because it's leaving the old traditional route and it's going this new RPG route? No, I am, and I, I was I was intrigued with the last Assassin's Creed because it went more RPG, and I felt like I think crap brought up a great point. Like I think they were limited with last gen, the technology last gen, to kind of really do what they wanted to do in terms of presenting that uh, you know op big open world RPG type environment. Um, and now they can do it because they have the technology to do it, and I think that they're firing in all cylinders. And I, I just um, you know I I, I guess the, the one question I do have if regards to uh, I think boom you play like 70 hours yes of this game uh, there's I've heard some people talk about the microtransactions okay um, yeah kind of being an issue is, is, is no, that, no. Have you run into that here here's the thing okay I'm, I'm gonna tell you this right now the, uh, th there are microtransactions you can spend real world money if you want mm. okay you could in the last one they are zero intrusive zero you don't have to you, you don't even have to hit the um the, the right directional button to go into the store, you don't even need it. The, the, the amount of gear that's dropped is bananas. And if you just play the game, you don't have to buy a thing. I mean, if you, like I said, if you want to spend, you know, like, like, like here's, here's for instance, if you want to like have a, mm -hmm. uh, a permanent 50% uh, XP boost, you can buy it. I, uh, if you want, if you want the uh, um, the map that unlocks every secret in the game, you could buy it. Mm -hmm. If you want a, a Pegasus, and I'm not going to front here, folks. 
I bought the Pegasus and, <laughs> and the silver armor. And you know why? Because I like that kind of, you know, I, I'm a big fan of that mythology. But wait a minute. Wait, wait, let's I got to rewind the show. Yes. Boom. Did you just say you bought a micro transaction? I did. I, I bought else. one. Yes. I dun, 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 dun. Yes. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Tony, the man who buys everything. Yeah, well, and he does you know, buy everything. You know, I, I I've always been a big fan of uh, Clash of the Titans, right? That's like one of my favorite I mean, all-time movies. I'm a big movies. fan too. Yeah, I'm with okay. And great seeing yep. the White Pegasus, I was I I kind of I, I want you to know it took me like three days to buy it. I'm like, man, I don't know if I should buy it. I'm 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 kind of you know contributing to the problem, but I really like that Pegasus. And guess what? You know what I can I can jump off cliffs and not die with Pegasus because it kind of flies down. Well, here's my thing. Is it really, you know, I, I, I just wonder if this is the 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 media kind of just kind of getting in our heads over the past decade saying that microtransactions are this evil thing. Video game prices haven't changed in forever. Loafs of bread have, folks. Yeah, milk. Okay, everything egg, goes egg, up. Egg. And Eat. games have stayed $60. If they're going to put a Pegasus in there, and Boom likes Pegasuses, <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> it's his 20 bucks, and I don't care what he does with it. You know, I, I, I don't you see know, it being a problem. Those you, XP boosts, you do not need to use them at all. In no, my you case, don't. because of the way that I play the game, my character is OP as fuck. Yes. My, bo my boat already has like purple hardcore um, upgrades on it. So my spears and my javelins and my ramming speed are massive damage. I'm destroying people out on those seas. And my character is also OP because I love doing all the side stuff and I do more of it than the game actually asks of me. So the people that are complaining are literally these media type guys or the reviewers that are trying to blitzkrieg through this game so they can put up a video before anyone else in the world and get all the clicks. Yeah. There is, there's no rush unless you put it on yourself to get through the game. You don't have and there is no need. No, yes. not at all. Like you don't even, I, it, unless the media didn't bring it up, you wouldn't even know they were if in the you're game. A, if you're on a crash course diet, right? You're doing this hardcore diet and you're exercising. Are you upset because when you're at the checkout counter, they got candy bars? <laughs> I mean, I don't, you don't have to buy it. Food. <laughs> Food. <laughs> no, and, like, the game doesn't bring them up often. Like, it just, no. it's, not, it's not front and center. You have to go and look for them, for God's sakes. Like, it, uh, this is just the media going on a, a massive witch hunt here for something I, I that isn't is, yeah. a problem. I think gonna, guys, speaking of, speaking of media, ahead. Jason Schreier, Jason Schreier got roasted for saying he that. Did. For saying that, you know what, I played... 35 hours of Assassin's Creed, and I, and I haven't felt that I've had to use microtransactions. People right. went at him for that. They did. They yeah. attacked him for no yeah, reason. Him. And yeah. I mean, to be That's honest crazy. with you, my, my, my thing about it is, is that, look, here's the thing. I think this is the situation right now, and, and it gets into people's head. The media has such power. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Is that they're telling you guys, we're consumer friendly. We're watching out for you, and they're pointing to the screen. You know what I mean? Like an old 80s commercial. We're looking out for you. It's like, you're not, dude. Here's the thing. We all know that it takes a lot of we, – we have shows where we sit here and we're like, oh, my God, the devs. The devs need more money. The devs need more attention. The, the minute the devs are like, well, in order for us to get more attention and more money, we need to put microtransactions in. And they'll be like, you can't do that. And it's like, well, what, are you in favor of them, like, surviving and doing their thing, or are you not? Like, Fortnite's a free game. Why is it making a bloody fortune? You like that, Alan? I actually worked bloody into it, and that's great. Nice. You'll get penalized for that in America. <laughs> but – like, you know, they make a fortune. They're making it off of skins and microtransactions. You know, there's somebody in the chat right now that was like, wow, oh, look at this panel. They're defending microtransactions. I'm not defending shit. <laughs> all I'm saying to you is if you don't want to buy it, there's an entire mall. We all walk through the mall, right? And I usually go to the mall for one store. I go there with a mission in mind. I, there's another 45 stores in there. I walk right by them. I don't have to buy their shit. I don't see what this is the same. Buy what you it's want, a, as long a, as it's not something it's to pay option. to win. True, crap. Yeah. As long as it's not pay to win, right? Then, yes, then I agree. The people should be good. You know yes. what I mean? Like I don't see why people would complain about uh, the ability to have something in a single player game if they want. Uh, like right. you, you have the option. Like people like to just make a big deal out of stuff. Just re remember, like the Forza Motorsport Seven stuff. They're like oh microtransactions yeah, all over, and there was about. not even a single microtransaction <laughs> in that yeah. game. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. You know, actually, one of the points I wanted to make was um, Horizon Four has one 
tiny little microtransaction. It's a three dollar treasure map. Yes, so I bought that treasure map first map. damn thing. <laughs> I I bought it too. I bought it's it right. too. It's so freaking. It's so freaking handy. You frauds! You know why I bought it because the, they give you the barn finds, and I drive around and around and around, and, I, and now they tell you exactly where they are. Yep. I don't give a damn. I bought it. You can buy it if you want. If you're more the type of person that likes to explore for hours on end looking for these little damn barns. Go ahead, man. You got you. You can do and, it. You know. And like, you know what I'm, I love as well. When you buy the treasure map for the main game, it'll work in all the expansions they release in the future. So if they add a new island in the future with new hidden collectibles, your old treasure map will still work. You don't have to buy it again, which is yeah. great. I buy them. Thank you. Wait, what'd you say, Enrique? So now I'm sold on a micro trade. <laughs> Two games and a micro trade. <laughs> the tally is now $123. Yeah. <laughs> so by, the end of, by the end of the show, Enrique's going to be like, yeah, we sold our house. We're moving into an yeah. apartment now because of what everybody said on the panel. Like, yeah, I'm going to get something in the mail that's an itemized list from uh, Enrique. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you owe me this. Um, no, I mean, I think we're all making valid points. And I think Crap's point, let's point a game out that really does irk people and irk gamers. And that was uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. I think that way, originally when it came out, I think they fixed that issue now. But that was a game where you could go in and buy either one of the heroes or one of their guns and you were OP. And I, I, I well, is that correct? I only play, yeah, I play that. Yeah, game it was, I'll was. guarantee that I have put in more hours than anyone on this panel combined. That is my favorite. That's like my all run game of the year is Star Wars. Well, there I you go, love Star Wars. And I've never had a problem once ever with people using those cards. Well, what what I, I happened? Don't, I don't play the hero versus hero mode. I got to say it is broken to shit in that mode with the cards and always has been. But like with the other modes, the Starfighter Assault or just the Team Deathmatch, I've never been getting destroyed. I frequently top the leaderboards, and I mean frequently in that game. Yeah. So I think the media made that out to be way bigger than it was, but it was a little bit of an issue, and I'm glad that it happened because it sent massive ripples through the industry of it change. Did. So, I mean, I whether or not it was as egregious, it was, like yeah, it was like whether or not it was as egregious as uh, they made it out to be, positive things have come from that. Yeah. And I think now we need to give some of these companies a little bit of benefit of the doubt that not every single microtransaction or boost or yeah. DLC is in some way, shape, or form nefarious. Or evil. And they, yeah, and they've made the game somehow less or worse or a drag or okay, a grind let's, let's put it without in, let's, it. Let's put it this way. To all you guys that are maybe in the chat or listening to this later that are going, you know what? I'm completely not on board with what you guys are saying. This is horseshit. Would you rather the game was 80 bucks and they took them out? I personally would rather keep it 60 and let, let people like Boom buy his Pegasus. Right. Well, yeah, and also, listen, Mooch, real quick, I just want to give Coke Viper X24 a shout out because he bought me the treasure map for Forza Horizon 4. <laughs> and you, can buy, you can gift people treasure maps? Yeah, hey, you can. I, I want to point out that I was one of those people in Battlefront 2 that liked the uh, hero versus hero mode, and that mode is fucked. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, yeah. see, what what had happened with microtransactions was with Battlefront 2, you had big gaming media whipping up a storm about that whole thing in a negative aspect. You had the gaming community, you had a bunch of people in the gaming community as well, not happy with what was going on, whether it was right or wrong. And it created this huge negative roller coaster, right? So now any game that says microtransaction, there is a part of the community that is just automatically shunning it. But guys, you know, microtransaction, it doesn't have to be a dirty word. Like, like I believe so shady said before, there was a huge amount of change after that backlash. Most of the microtransactions are cosmetic or a treasure map in Forza Horizon. No big deal. It, it is time for people to kind of stand back. Like, yo, right. the community did something, created change. Enjoy it. Don't, don't like wipe it clean. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, there are good points. There are uh, many microtransactions out there that you can just enjoy if you I, want. I want to point out uh, that EA, like, and this isn't a bash EA thing because I like some of their games, but they go from, like, they really messed up with Battlefront 1, right? Yeah. It was like, right away, I bought the $80 version or whatever it was that had the hand solo gun. That motherfucker was picking off people with one shot. Uh, people were selling that on eBay for, like, 50 bucks. <laughs> uh, you know, they were selling you DLC to maps that they weren't announced yet. They're like, spend $50 on our map pack. And we promise we're going to give you maps. We're just not going to tell you what they are. 
you know, and so they did that. And then they're like, we're going to fix that for part two. And then in part two, they did like the star card stuff. And people was like, now I'm not really sure. Like I, I, I tried to play it not too long ago. The heroes mode is totally screwed. Uh, the regular mode, it just seems like the people that kill me mostly have full on star cards, like, like the really beefy ones, you know, like they, they, do, but, have, so. they do, but in reality, you're usually getting like 99% of the time you're just getting blasted down in regular mode. It's not because this turret has 40%. More yeah, more. probably. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say cause I haven't, I haven't put enough time in there cause I really like that game. And then at first I was like, Hey, it's not so bad. And then it was like later on, it just became, uh, you know, especially cause I like the hero versus hero mode. Yeah, uh, that was, and it's still screwed up. It's, and you know, like it, it's baffling. You know, it's, uh, I that I'm still, it's unbelievable that here we are in almost 2019. Star Wars has made this big comeback. Ugh, no thanks to the Last Jedi, and <laughs> um, you know, we haven't had but two Star Wars games this entire yeah. time. It's like yeah. Marvel movies are like the the cream of the crop, and we've literally had. What one Spider-Man one. game and no yeah, other yeah. no Avengers games no nothing this entire generation is like it's these crazy people are, yeah like I don't understand yeah. why point, the, why yeah. they haven't um you know really branched out and tried to give us any of these games like there's developers out there that could do it like they tie themselves to certain things though you know what I mean I don't understand why EA is tied to uh, Star Wars, like let somebody else. I would love to see other developers get a shot yeah. at doing something with that. Like Star idea. Wars thirteen, thirteen was a oh, game that, that I so want. Good, you know. Yeah. I don't want, I'm tired of Battlefront. I understand Battlefront back in the day. Crap gave me a great nostalgia story, and I buy it. I'm buying what he's selling. But I, I, I just think it, we're we're kind of up well. Here's the thing. I, I, I in, in to shooters. Star the original Star Wars Battlefront two. I love those. My first like clan right. multiplayer type right. thing. And I met and I'm still friends with people from to this day. So it's always been a great experience. But looking back on the game, the game is shit. Now right. you know what I mean. Like right. it, it was shit then. Even like your hits didn't register. Uh, it was laggy. Uh, you know, it was just it was it was bad. <laughs> you know, there was yeah. OP, there was OP classes. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it was, it was bad, but it was enjoyable for the time and the, the friendships and that kind of stuff. The, the, the community, uh, you know that, and I think that's, that's what made that game. Um, I was, I think I was kind of looking for that again in this newer yeah. series Suppos and they really didn't supposedly really crap. We're going to see something from respawn. Yeah. They're going to have a force unleashed light type game is what they're working on. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that's 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 allegedly what they're working on. It's like the Force Unleashed, but a lighter version. It'll probably pretty linear too. Which that's fine. I, be light. I, I if the if the Force Unleashed was any lighter, I mean, it, it'd be like Yoda well, when I he was mean, floating. Is, probably there's probably gonna be very <laughs> linear and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, and I don't know for sure. I mean, that was just this art the article that I read uh, right, right, right. ago. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I I would I would love to get. You know, I don't understand why developers do this. Like, people wanted a KOTOR 3 for the longest time. Nothing, right? Right. Uh, Jedi Academy, a new one, nothing, right? Uh, something. Why don't we get something related to these movies? Yeah, how, about a, how, about, how about a new Rogue Squadron? <laughs> yeah, a Rogue, yeah. A Rogue You know what? Even though Rogue One, I thought was a great sleeping pill. Even though I didn't care for the movie, <laughs> I think that would make a great, a great video game, to be honest with you. All the yep. different, like, to invent, like, she went on all these different adventures. She had to go over here and sneak over here and then do this and this. And it was, like, about getting the, um, you know, the parts that, or the, what is it, the, the parts of the map that basically show the Death Star and, and the weak spots and this and that. Like, that, that's, like, the making for a great game, and it doesn't need a main character. You can have these these sub these sub characters that, that become big stars, yes. you know? Yep. I, I mean, that's that's what it's all. Do you guys remember the SNES Star Wars game, the side scroller where the Loved first them. one was when you were yep. out in the right, you were so out with the Star sand. Wars. Fantastic. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and you started with the, the just the shooter. You're just Luke, his hands permanently out, and you're just shooting things and jumping over the probably one of the best Star Wars games I've ever played. <laughs> and as crap said, it was terrible. Okay, so so I found what I was talking about on this site, right? So yeah. um just Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is going to be, quote-unquote, similar to LucasArts' 2008 game Star Wars The Force Unleashed, although, quote-unquote, less extreme. Um, according to this guy, uh, he says that he's talked to people connected with the game, and he was told that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will play a lot like The Force Unleashed, except without the Mountain Dew qualities. By I think that, that just he means, means like the superpowers that he's pulling Yeah, the Force going. powers will be less extreme, more true to canon. You won't see anything absurd. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. You'll probably want to keep, yeah. So I guess that's that's what they're talking about. 
I like the Force Unleashed one. Me too. I actually like two as well. It was short, and they, you know what happened there was they they rushed them. They're like, we need you to you know have this game See, out by holiday, and the that's reason, the same shit that they yeah. did with Obsidian with Kotor two, right? Because Kotor one came out. Um, I think in 2003 and they're like, we need KOTOR two by 2004 holiday, or I'm not sure if the years are right, but I know there's only a year difference there. And so that's why a lot of that game wasn't finished or like there was these quests, there was quests that, that led nowhere. And like people would just say stuff that didn't make any sense. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Well, that's how Force Unleashed one game like drastically changed and added, in my opinion, to the original trilogy story. It turned out that like Darth Vader was a like he started the rebellion to basically sidetrack the Emperor. Like, look over here while I'm starting up this apprentice, so he can get strong enough and we can take you over. I thought that was amazing. Like Vader yeah. started the fucking rebellion. Yeah. What? That was almost as big to me as a Star yeah. Wars fan as finding out that the dude was Luke's father. It was huge. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. And then the second one, it, it played better, but the story was well. Like, it's yeah, it, it, it's like you know, I'm a big Star Wars nerd, and I'm a big you know, like I have very controversial opinions on it. But I actually really like Solo and the surprise ending there that Darth Maul was there. So yeah, I was like, I was like, holy shit, that's really cool because that ties me together as like a, a a prequel fan. You know, I was like, hey. Why didn't this this movie should have got the love that it deserved and not the hate? Because a lot of people, like myself included, stayed the hell away from it because we were so disappointed with The Last yeah. Jedi that we were like, hey, I ain't going to see that damn Star Wars movie. Uh, you know what I mean? So see, and, the reason, and which the, is, reason the Force Unleashed didn't work for me, though, guys, I just want to throw this out there. The, my first uh, meeting with that game was when I, <laughs> I played it on the Wii. Oh boy! And because they were like, "Oh, you can do the lightsabers with the with the move controllers," and I'm like, <laughs> "It was horrendous, yes. horrendous." Got, but go ahead, you go got ahead. hooked, man. <laughs> I did. I it was be something great. It was something awful. And that game, that, when, you, when you say it's going to be a light version of that, I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, like, well, I, after reading it again, it's uh, you know, it's not going to have as like what I liked about that game was when you first played the force unleashed your vader yeah and you just have all the powers and you're throwing everybody yes and just, you know whoosh whoosh throwing everything and i love that yeah um and so i guess i i didn't know what to expect when i thought when i heard lighter but i guess it's going to be you know just less of that you know more a little bit more realistic with that kind of stuff so yeah. hey i'm cool with that I'm, I'm interested to see what it is it'll probably be something quite linear um you know i i just wish that they would just branch out let some of these other companies do something you know what i mean like look marvel and let sony do a spider-man game yeah you know uh but i guess other than that there's certain people that have to do those things you know it's like i it's just it's weird to me you know it's we've spent all this time with, like it's the biggest property going right now and we literally have no games about any of it i mean yeah. none of it it's it's ridiculous last gen we would have had 20 sega made shitty you know <laughs> avengers games by now you know and now we got yeah, nothing maybe that's because it's just cost too much for the rights now crap i don't know if it gets out of hand you know no this yeah, is the thing I those, games, those games print money man and they, they make they make lego versions i agree i, agree. I just <laughs> think that when every when everybody stood there and they and they to use a star wars reference everyone's standing here to you know when the emperor was like i'm going to take over and it was like they're doing you know standing up to glorious applause everybody was so excited when disney bought everything you know, Disney buying everything is not good. It's not good. You know, everyone's like, oh, good. Finally, finally, Disney took it over. They got a big mouse. They know what they're doing. What? Oh, Mooch, yeah. Mooch, it was good. Mouse. It was it was good for Marvel <laughs> in the MCU. But let, let's be honest. Everything that everybody's talking about with Star Wars, well, it games, a monopoly and everything when like that. company owns everything. All, the source of it all is Disney. We're, we're asking, like, why don't they have this type of game or why not why aren't they bringing rogue squadron or something right. like that it's because disney is like no we can only do these types of stories this is the type of story we want they are the ones <laughs> controlling the narrative right now and not letting the developers go out there and and really make kind of like that crazy over the top star wars game that a lot of gamers are asking for yeah. are you saying but that disney is the emperor <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? I was happy when Disney um bought Star Wars for the main reason was I'm a big fan and Lucas basically got bullied off of his own franchise. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now only now is it so ironic that people are like, damn, those prequels really weren't bad because you see with the shit we get now. Right. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. saying, like, I mean, there's been some good stuff. I actually liked 
uh, the two offshoots much better than seven and eight. You yeah. know what I mean? I thought that they didn't yeah. do those jet characters. Like, did they watch the movies? That's what I remember thinking. Have you like I didn't mind seven because I was like, Han Solo, like Harrison yeah. Ford carried that, right? He he was, he carried it. And then like they started off episode eight totally wrong for me when he just throws the lightsaber. Like bullshit. He was I like like Mark Hamill didn't act at all in episode seven. He's at the end, but he's definitely not thinking I'm gonna throw this damn thing when she gives it to me. She, he's no. definitely not thinking that. I agree and with so you. So like the that. moment he does that, you're just like that sets the whole wrong tone. They ruin all the surprises. I could rant about this shit forever. They ruin <laughs> the whole Snoke thing. Oh, let's just let's just kill him off. He's a nobody, right? Everybody's like, who is he really? He's nobody. He gets cut in half. That was yeah, the biggest I mean, mystery or yeah, intrigue that was going. Who's Ray's was. parents? They're nobodies. Oh, they're well, drunks. thanks for fucking They're parents. drunks. Why, why, yeah, they're just drunks. Like, that makes perfect Why is she all of a sudden fucking more powerful than Anakin and Luke combined and can do all kinds <laughs> of weird shit? Why <laughs> is nobody talking about it? His high minichlorians. I everything I got to not go full Sith on this topic, man. I am a Why is he? Fan. Why is, why is <laughs> Luke drinking that? Out of this dipple, uh, like squeezing milk. You know what I mean? Like, why is he? Why was he like refusing Mama. to fight his father? But then he's pulling a lightsaber on his nephew. Like that, none of this shit made any sense. And then he just loses the will to live. And uh, yeah, the whole fucking thing was just bad. And I was so pissed off about it. Uh, you know what I mean? You're like, not oh, alone. Wait, wait. Yeah, so guys, alone. I just want to say the lack of games. Could we attribute that to the lack of double A developers? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you could. That's up I, there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because like THQ was, did THQ do a couple Star Wars games? I believe um, that they did. Let me let me look. Hold on. I'm, I'm not sure like, if they yeah. did, but they, I, they, I know they, there's a lot of those mid tier companies, developers that went under. Yes, yeah, you saw gone. that some of their IPs got picked up, but that doesn't mean anything. That just means the IPs got put into a, a filing cabinet. Oh, don't but, get me started on. on that whole Rose and fucking Finn. Uh, subplot oh. where they where they go away for forty minutes to Canto bite and fucking yeah, and, and do nothing like it didn't do anything and it has nothing to do with her character specifically. I like Finn from Seven and they ruined him in that. They ruined Poe. He's a little chump. Like <laughs> oh, let's not tell him what's going on because we're running out of fuel because that's been such an issue in every Star Wars movie is their fuel right? Like mm. holy shit, that Don't movie was just <laughs> stay off Star Wars subjects and the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, who the hell let that pass? They're like. <laughs> Like, like the next horrible. Horrible. You know, I want to go. I want to go back to what Enrique said because, like, I hear what he's saying, but I, I think I, I would go back to the core being Disney again because at one point in time, you saw uh, Disney, at least with Marvel, saying that you know we're back into it. We're gonna make these great games, you know, with with Marvel and with kind of like our, you know, the the mm. the products that we own. So they went with Insomniac for Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, and even though Battlefront didn't work, they went with EA with Battlefront. And it's so you would, think, Avengers. you would think they have enough money. They are like a godlike company business-wise that, you know, it doesn't matter if they're double A, but I, I think it's more they're really kind of like choking it down on what the developer, the type of game the developer can make and where they need to go with the games in terms of the stories and stuff. So I, I really, I got to go right back home to the source and say that it's on Disney right now, man. Can no, I just, can I just very controlling of the franchise for sure? Yeah, I, absolutely. Can I just say one thing though, guys vote for me and I'll make star Wars great again. Wow. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, you know what? I actually like, I, like I said, I like solo a lot. I thought they did a really good job there. It was surprisingly um, good. It really solo was. was better. I, I, I thought solo was much better than the reviews actually said it was. It, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Every, great point. yeah. And I also liked, uh, what, uh, rogue one. I liked that a lot. I, rogue I thought one it was wasn't really bad, good. man. Like yeah. I, I can't agree with Mooch on that. Like I, I, I like solo. Especially the ending. I am right with crap on that one. Yeah. The ending is really Rogue what kind of hooked those, me on that. That's one of those Star Wars. Okay, listen, let's be honest. There's a Star Wars movie every year, right? So it's like, okay. So it is what it is. That's fine. Disney's capitalizing on the stuff that we all buy as word of the day toilet paper. Star Wars is just a household name, <laughs> right? That's fine. But realistically, let's be, let, you got to understand, like Rogue One went to Netflix, like the day after it left theaters. Like, I mean, I, well, I mean, it did do over a billion dollars. I wouldn't say it's crap. Like that, a, that, a I, honestly, it's, I, just... it's not that it's a failure or it's, it's not. I'm also going to say it's not really a success because everybody likes Star Wars. Everybody from the like infants of the age of two. You know what I mean? All the well, way up to like 99 I, year old I people can still walk. What I would say is if you're a real big <laughs> Star Wars fan, you like that movie. And I, oh man, here we go. I could tell you why, because it has Star Wars Rebels for the, the cartoon. It had Chopper in there. It had their ship in there. It's got yeah. a little, it's got a little, a lot of these little things. It had, 
Um, you know, it, yeah. it did. It had Princess Leia in there because this movie literally takes place leading up to Episode Four. Episode Four, yeah, yeah. 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 And so it had, and it had uh, Tarkin in there, and they did a really good job. Oh, with yeah, the, it was great. With the yep. CGI, like, and it had Vader. Like just tearing through everybody with that saber, and it showed him on in his little tank and stuff like that. That's like saber really, badass. yeah. And not only that, but also you now know why there is an empty seat in Episode Four at the table because that was Krennic's seat, and he got killed. So you knew, like, and, and you and you found out what happened to all the people uh, prior. Like I thought they did just a brilliant. That was job. awesome. It was, like, like, it was dark. It was that dark. That random pilot in space crap, he was Red 5, and he got blown up, which made room for Luke to take Red 5. Like, we can yeah. nerd out big time, man. Oh, exactly. I thought, yeah. I thought yeah. Solo was uh, maybe the best of the new, but since seeing it the second yeah, time right. since it's come out, it triggered me so bloody hard on just a lot of stuff. Like, why did that no-name Imperial officer have to give him his last name? There's just a lot of stuff that really doesn't sit yeah, right. They, I think yeah, Disney I get, needs to hurry I get up that. and get something good. <laughs> yeah, like I, I get that too. Like they like the whole "I hate you," um, I know thing. Like that was forced, and then there was also another thing where uh, I guess I just uh, the whole thing where Lando is like basically hits on anything that moves. You yeah. know what I mean? That was that was very annoying. Like forced. You know what I mean? Like I was just like, what the hell are they doing here? Like they're just doing this to do it, and it didn't make sense because the character we already know because he's been in two movies right. and he's smooth with the ladies, but he smooth wasn't hitting on, operator. But he wasn't hitting. And he, wasn't, he wasn't hitting. He wasn't hitting on robots. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. His robot was in love with him. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think well, it's apparently like him and his robot were getting it on. This you is know? a great, great like, Star yeah. Wars segment on the show. I do yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. The audience <laughs> kind of dug it too, to be honest with you. But let me, I'm going to do a full circle and come back to games for a second. Like, like, let's get into this. This is a kind of a news topic that I, I found very interesting. And when I saw the headline, I was like, hey, guess what? I'm actually interested in this. But we talked about it on Xbox Nation, and then more news came out. More articles are coming out. We're finding out more. The PSN name changes, which everyone's been asking for, is maybe <coughs> not what we've really been asking for. Yeah. It is good. what we thought it was. It's not what we thought. Right, exactly. So I, I mean, knew exactly what it would be. It would be shit. And it's I shit. Didn't, <laughs> I didn't think you would be able to take something that's just your name and mess that up. But realistically, this is an issue, folks. So if a, any games prior to April 1st, 2018. Basically, uh, gonna it, work. Right. <laughs> who plays old games? Right. Who plays old games? So if you don't play old games, this doesn't affect you, folks. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, like myself, right? And I was just talking to shout out to, to Sin Vendetta who hooked up crap with Black Ops. Sin goes, yes, right thank to you very much, Sin. I got awesome that baby dude. installed right now. I tell awesome you what, dude. man. He well, he wrote me. He goes, listen, I want to, I want to get back into Bloodborne. I go, yeah, you know that sounds good. I Bloodborne's prior to 2018, and if I change the name when the beta launches, I run the risk of that game maybe not functioning properly. Or, or not holding saves properly. There's a list of things. But the thing about could, it is... There, there could, there's a chance that you can't even play it, is what it is. Yeah, it can break yes. the game. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I mean, uh, you guys see where this... Here's my... If, if I was sitting at the table at Sony, I would say, guys, listen, I understand that we're doing this. Take the L on this. Yeah, let's, let's just... Let's, listen, everybody knows we don't have it. It, it. Like, start a new account. Sorry, tough shit. Or you're going to be McLovin the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> that's up to you guys. But realistically, I just... I, I think this is going to do more harm than good. I, I mean, do you guys agree with me? I do. I think this is an absolute disaster. I mean, in today's world, we're all like, really accustomed to seeing advertisements with a little asterisk that you have to go look for the fine print this asterisk was mind-blowing like you can change your name and most games won't work from 2018 and back like that's this year and back like yep. that's nuts and then oh but don't worry about it we'll let you go back to dildo gaggins for free if you want to choke on that free name that you, like it makes no you sense. Choke on a name. It's, it's just brutal it's just <laughs> brutal i think they should have taken the hell on this or i don't know what to say like it really harkens back to this playstation network being built from the ground up hastily to try and compete with live yo shady said it absolutely perfect right at the end there what what's going on from what i've seen and i'm i'm guesstimating here so um I, i'm thinking that they didn't go back to the core infrastructure of psn and correct any kind of coding when it comes to the your id what they did is they found a workaround something on the surface that they can possibly use to change the id because they saw that you know, this issue was not going away. They weren't really addressing it. They're saying, yeah, we're working on something. 
and stuff like that. I think they found a workaround because there's no way in hell how our games and applications can can possibly be not compatible with an ID change. That makes no sense. Usually at the core of your network is where the whole ID coding is. And unless yeah. you go back to the drawing board for that, you go back to the core and you change the coding there. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to do a proper, you're not going to do your customers proper. Yeah. That's pretty much what's going to happen. I think in wicked siege in the chat says, this is just an update for PS five. So they have no problems later. Wicked siege. That is a great way to paint a rainbow on this. <laughs> There's no way they would have had that disclosure out there. And there's no, yeah. I, I listen, I, I listened to uh, uh, Kind of Funny, and that's a big time PlayStation channel. And even they were skeptical. They, they said at this point in time, he's not changing his, but he goes, the, the gentleman who was hosting with Greg, he says, Greg, are you going to, would you even do it? And he's like, no. Like, it, it's too high of a, like, I wanted to change mine. Um, but like, realistically, I was like, you know what? No, mine still represents my channel and everything. I, I'm going to keep it because I don't want to lose the games or the ability to play games. I, I just think that the, the risk, it, it, you know, Adam Sharp was saying the same thing in the chat. Adam's like, oh no, no, Mooch. That's just, you know, that's, that's, you can still play those games. They're working on the, yeah, they're working on it, but do you really want to change your name? And then certain games, I mean, I'm using the word bricked, but the game doesn't work or, or they said that you may, if you were on leaderboards, you may be wiped off. Or your mm -hmm. save files might disappear. Like that's not that's, that's not even like a small risk you're willing to assume, well, is it? Mooch, mooch, and and when you're looking at this, you know, an ID change is for somebody who has been in that environment for a long right. time. So it's not somebody coming in uh April 2nd, 2018, like, oh shit, everything's yeah. great for me. Yeah because they just recently picked their name and all that good stuff is for people who have been there for a while. So to hear them say, now they right. did say the majority of games, the most played games, the majority of most played games, that's like cutting it down three or four times, you know, to the consumer though. They're, they're, they're going to be fine before 2018. Well, but shout, like, out, shout out to Von Lamont in the chat. He goes, what else do people have to complain about? They're fixing the name issue, allowing crossplay, trying to make PlayStation now better. Von, welcome to the life and of, of, of an Xbox fan, buddy. Um, Dude, no matter what, hey, hey, no hey, matter hey, what hey, Xbox hey. does, people are like, that sucks too. You're like, oh, hey, <laughs> if, if Xbox were the ones screwing up or can possibly screw up your your situation when changing a name, people would be outraged. It'd oh, be a big outraged. deal. And we it'd would be, be too. Be I wouldn't be changing deal. my Xbox name either. I got this goes ready. I'll just say the same thing on record. If Xbox yeah. was changing names, they had the ability to do it, even if it was a free without a charge, and I would have the uh, the, the chance of losing a save file and not be able to play a game, I'm not doing it. Yep. Yep. You know, Mooch, I just want to read an ex <clears throat> excuse me, an excerpt from the actual PSN blog please, post. Please do, boom. And and this is confusing. OK, it says when you change your online ID, yeah. you will have the option to display your previous ID with your new ID so your friends can recognize you. Once you decide to play your uh, play your old ID or not, you won't be able to adjust this after completing the online ID change project uh, progress. That is very confusing for me. I mean, I, I didn't want to change mine anyway. I'm Mr. Boonson across the board. But what is what is strange is that and i and i think that this is actually the good part of it the first name change is free the first one i don't know if you're going to survive a first name change and you're going to want to go to a second one but after that it's 10 bucks to change and five dollars if you're a playstation plus member right, right. yeah well you know and shout out to von again von goes playstation name change is cheaper than xbox yeah because it doesn't work you know i mean <laughs> It is cheaper, well, but I mean, yeah, because you change your name and you could possibly uh, have corrupted things. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's just change only your name crap. you change your identity. You're not even who yeah. you are in your game yeah. world anymore. Well, it, what's ridiculous is the, the game. It only works for 2018. We're in 2018. Yes. What happens and, and, if you want to play a game prior to 2018, right? You're, like you're pretty yeah. much shit out of luck. And also, uh, uh, Mooch, real quick, this this uh, this article oh, comes from ahead. Polygon. They they say that Sony's update to PSN IDs comes with a caveat, a major one at that. It might not work with all games on all platforms. Yeah. That's bananas, dude. That's just yeah. uh, why would you even listen? I, I've said this before. You guys have known, okay? I, I, I'm, I've been a big fan of Sony. I love their first, uh, their first party stuff. I love their marketing, but I have to say, this is a big stumble.
Right. This and is, this know, is oh, a big, big stumble. Hey, Mo, right. if I can, if I can, I just want to address the chat real quick. Hey, guys, when it comes to stuff like this, uh, let's end it with the what about isms. All right. When we bring up something that that could be detrimental to a gamer, don't go, well, what about the paywall and free to play games? That will never solve anything. I have gone on record saying that, yeah, guess what? Xbox, they need to lift that paywall when it comes to free to play games. When it right. comes We've down to it, that multiple times. Yeah. So we, your what about it. isms aren't going to do anything. If we're going to mm. come together as gamers and make the environment better for everybody, all right, across the board, whether you're a Sony gamer, whether you're an Xbox gamer, whether you're a Switch gamer, you can't deflect a problem to something else on a platform that you hate. It does no good. No, it doesn't. That's if you really run for president, one. I'm voting for you. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> Enrique, what's your take on it? Well, I just want to say, I think this is an example of strengths versus weaknesses. Sony's not a software company. True. And they're just not. This is not their strength. They're not. I mean, PSN is not their strength. It's not. I mean, you compare it to Xbox Live to PSN. I mean, I've been, I, you know, I was an Xbox Live beta tester. And when PSN first came out, Xbox Live was miles ahead of them. And, and they still are to, to some extent. And this is just an example of, look, Sony's not a software company. This yeah. is not their strength. And this is probably, I mean, it's crazy as it sounds, this is probably best case scenario right now for Sony. Yeah. And they're probably like shrugging this off saying, you know what? Um, games after April 2018, your new uh, PSN ID will work. Yep. And we're just going to bring this thing forward to next gen. I, I like the way it. you put that, Enrique, but let me let me poise the question I said earlier. If, if I put you in an executive seat now, and you're the PR, you're the damage control, wouldn't you say, listen, I understand that you guys are doing the best that you can do, and I think everything you just said was gospel, by the way. All I'm saying is that wouldn't you think that this could, in a PR world, be a nightmare? Because you have to remember something. We have to take ourselves. Guys, you in the chat as well, pay attention to this, please, and if you're listening later. This is not about us. We're, we're talking about it. We're paying attention to it. We know what's coming down the pipe. There's somebody somewhere come next year is going to be like, hey, do you want to be a part of our our preview program? What can I do in there? You can change your name. I've been waiting to do that. And they just do it. They don't read the fine print. You have to remember the public does not just read the fine print. And and, and, and that's the thing. And you, and you know, a lot of people are going, to, well, buyers beware. Yeah, I get it. We can all say that stuff. But what I'm saying to you, Enrique, is I think everything you said was right. But I think this is going to cost Sony... They're better off just like Boom said. Take the L on this. Realistically, you you have your name. You you go to you go to your grave with it, or or you start over from zero trophies. It's up to you. But this this is something where you're just going to get random people, not people that do YouTube, not people that play games twenty four seven, just people that are gamers that go home, change their name from McLovin to Jay Smith, right? Something they wanted, <laughs> and they go home the next day and they go to play a game from twenty seventeen, and whoop. <laughs> you're erased. Everything, all your dad is erased. And you're like, what? You know, and, and Enrique, I, Enrique, I got to say, um, I, and I hear you on the whole hardware thing as opposed right to software with Sony. Yeah. But, but Greg E3 in the chat uh, pointed out something really, really good, made a valid point as well. He was like, you think Sony would hire some software people by now? Well, you know what I'm saying? That, that, I was going to say that. The other frustrating thing with Sony, it's like, you think they would hire some, and we talked about this on BRAP. Um, where Slomo said, you know, you think they'd hire some some database administrators to like yes. figure this out. Well, like, when considering how successful this console's been, and that and that's that's a great point. I mean, that's to me personally, that's that's frustrating. Yeah, like yeah. you guys have made so much money off the hardware, software, and you guys have put all these great games. Um, couldn't you guys hire some people? Well, you, you know, know what really sucks is they started charging this entire generation. Yeah. Right. And yeah, then man. so basically they they're charging for the generation and then, you know, they haven't done anything to, to really step up to the plate and fix that. That's mm, a, you, know, that, that, you, you put that in a video crap. I thought that was really interesting when you said that. Think about this, guys. This is a very valid point. OK, this is not console war stuff. This is just discussion. Sony went from a free service of multiplayer uh, games and playing, you know, online with your friends to charging you the same as, as Xbox Live Gold, which I think that they're entitled to do that. But 
and we're going to get into it in our next segment. I wish I kind of brought it up earlier. Xbox's newest update, which they always have updates, like every three months they have a major update. Or every six months, every three months it's a decent one. Dude, they and, do they do an update every two weeks, but the, the well, legitimate I'm, I'm one. I'm trying to talk about, about yeah, yeah. Yeah, about three months is when you actually, they, they make news. Yeah. Sony hasn't done anything since the beginning. Of Why would they? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, but I'm saying that they haven't, they haven't, they haven't given you anything for your. What you were getting free before, now you're just paying for the same exact service. And the thing about it is this, but that, that's another conversation. I want to defend Sony for a second. So you know, it, what Slow Mo said and what Enrique is saying, I agree. Why don't they go out there and, and get their software? You know, get that that staff ramped up. The same thing you said about Xbox and getting some marketing goddamn people in there. I mean, I don't, I, I still can't figure out why Xbox can't make a decent commercial in five years. You know, I mean, for God's sake, me and crap, just doing some of our MNC bits have come up with better commercial ideas than they have. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for God's sakes. Uh, but yeah, I, I realistically, I, I wonder why a lot of the, and you know, this is a shout out to Mad Jack and shout out to Von Lamont who are great people in the chat. They're Sony fans, Adam Sharp too. These are big time Sony fans that are always hang out uh in our chat and that's awesome you oh, guys shoot. but we you got guys show stopper in What's the up, show but like realistically what i wanted to say was these guys if what you were paying for in 20 what you weren't paying for in 2012 you're now paying 60 dollars 60 dollars a year i understand we're kind of you know i'm not saying it's a big deal for some but for some it is what are you getting what did you get this generation that you didn't have in ps3 it's nothing monumental we've gone from every we have 16 person party chats uh, I mean, it, the, 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 the avatars, you can, you, can, you can now create these new avatars. You've got uh, uh, Dolby Atmos. You've got Dolby Vision working now. You've got all these different. I mean, it's, it's nonsense. I don't have the list in front of me, but Xbox has had a major update uh, every three to six months. And it's somewhat, it's, of all the things they come up with, each gamer has one thing that's substantial. And I, I, I agree with you, Crap. You did that video. It was a great video. I was just shocked that nobody, because if I was a, as, as much of a Sony user, a Sony platform user that I am as a Microsoft Xbox user, I'd be like, geez, guys, I don't really mind paying the 60 bucks, but w weren't we getting the same shit for free yesterday? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm just shocked we don't see that. And like I said, Xbox has got its problems too, but like, I, I just, that, that is an interesting, an interesting thing. Now, who else has a, a PlayStation name that they want to change? but won't because of these these issues. So I have an interesting stance on this because I do want to change my name and I think I might actually go ahead and do it. Well, why? Now, Alan, I think I know why. Alan, Alan's a brand new PS4 owner. That's yes. why. So I don't actually have a huge backlog of PS4 games. And if the issue did arise where I want to play an older title and it just simply wouldn't work on my account, then I could just make a new account for that specific title if needs be. Like, I don't use the system that often, right. so I can take advantage of the name change. And, you know, I, I usually only play the Sony first-party games on PS4, and I imagine they'll all work fine with the name change. Yeah. Like if their first party games don't work with it, then that's, that'd be a little crazy. It's going to yeah. hit hardest with the guys that have really embraced digital on PlayStation and yeah. hate their name. And they want to move on from that name, but keep their digital library that works without having to go back to a name that they honestly left because they're done with it. So for those guys that really sucks, because if they start a new account, they lose their their games. You can't yeah. transfer digital content to a new account. So for those guys especially, this really sucks. But there's a lot of people out there that have a PlayStation 4 and they have three to four, maybe five physical discs of the exclusives over there. And that's it. And for that, other yeah. than the trophies, it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, myself personally, I got to kind of agree with Alan. I, I play PlayStation for single player games like I, I understand that uh, Call of Duty, this generation, uh, went to um, uh, PlayStation for marketing rights, and they have this. Now it's gone from thirty days to seven days, which is really nothing. But nonetheless, I just I've built such a community from the three hundred and sixty world into the Xbox world of playing that game, especially that much like Crap said with reuniting with older friends and, and getting in touch with people and playing that game. That's memory lane for a lot of us. Um, I, PlayStation, I I only play you know, single player games on. I, I really do. I only go in there. I play their exclusives. I don't play very many multiplayer games on there at all. Like not even a little. So, and I think Enrique, you, you play a decent amount of, of, of PlayStation games, but I think you're also in that camp. Aren't you also a single player, mainly game user on, on Sony? 
Yeah, I mean, once once I got the Xbox One X, I mean, I just I you know, I, Sony the the P, PS4 became you know the platform where I play most of their exclusives, and then yep, I started playing the multiplats on the Xbox One X. Yeah, yeah, so. and, and and I mean, I think I think you fall into the same category as many people on the panel, and I think a lot of people. Uh, general in general gamers the x is not breaking records but it's selling well and i think microsoft it's saw general. where they messed up in the beginning of the generation i see now how they fixed the ship and i and i i can tell you right now from people that have talked behind the scenes to crap and z and a couple other people i don't think microsoft is willing to let go of that what we're, what we'll call the power crown for now is only because you can see that even though the digital foundry has taken it easy on the resolution debates and the media has it's still a it's still a topic of discussion. So I and I think next generation is going to be pretty damn equivalent, guys. I, I really do. It's going to come down to uh, features and exclusives. I, I really think that's what it's going. to... I think power is going to be pretty much on par for both of these companies. Um, I think you know they're both going to have the same resolution. I think they're both going to have the same kind of frames. Um, they're all talking the same. There's a lot more open communication now in gaming, and in, I mean in the business sense. I don't just mean us on the panel and us gamers. In the business world, they're all sitting down with developers. They're allowing the, 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 the shout out to the Don. The Don has told us like there's the just more. Don. There it is. Thank you, Xbox, <laughs> for making it official. Uh, realistically, there's a lot more conversation going on. Um, with that being said, look at it this way, guys. PS5 and Xbox Scarlet or Xbox Two, whatever you want to call it, is now rumored. They're rumored to have some sort of a tablet, possibly. Now, maybe that's going to come with these power devices, or they're going to be sold separately. But this is something that Nintendo did that we all chuckled at, right? We all kind of chuckled at. Well, no, I think it'll be more like the Switch because if it's not portable to leave the house, it's dead on delivery. Uh, the Wii U, the thing was damn stuck to the same room. It had to be within 10 feet of the unit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I now you have something like this. And crap, you also kind of – I think you did a video on this as well. It was very good. I, I, I think that uh, a tablet idea for the streaming – capabilities is is something where we're all heading because if you don't have an actual controller like switch gives you with that unit it's not realistic and i know shady i think you were hysterical on twitter the other day you're like <laughs> it's not so hard you throw a controller in a backpack come on yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah but you know and, and i don't get me wrong realistically i hear you but really realistically i'm not throwing a controller anywhere and heading out of the house that's just not happening but i may take like a unit that's built together like a switch where I go out and play if it's an Xbox or a Sony unit. I mean, do you see where I'm coming from with that, Shady? I do, big time. And I think actually beyond that, we're actually going to start to see some new types of controllers maybe come out there yeah. that are really thin, and you can just slide them into your pocket and pull them out, and it's like a split Xbox controller similar to maybe the Wiimote from the past. Like, I think that uh, adaptive controller that Xbox has out right now has a whole bunch of peripheral options from like straight up flight sticks and giant buttons and yeah. even almost a Wiimote that isn't massive or not massive controllers aren't big, but they're big enough. You're not about to put it in your jean pocket, whereas some of these things look like they might be able to. But if they do start making their own devices, that can be a phone and a tablet as well as a functional controllers on the side switch like thing. I think the world is ready for that type of stuff. I man, I got to say, when, when it comes to the new hardware, Hearing a rumor like this, I am a little bit concerned. Now, I know, you know, a lot of people out there, you know, we're all into tech, you know, the more tech, the better. But but let's be real. If they're going to put a tablet or something like that in with the system, so this way you can do the streaming and stuff, uh, price point, I'm concerned with at that point in time. And then I'm also concerned with, you know, when it comes to the base console to keep the price point down what kind of sacrifices are you going to make? I'd rather have them sell something separately for the people who want to get into that. Now, I know I know, having it in the box, kind of like what they thought about with the Connect 2, having it in the box means people are going to use it because it's there. That doesn't always work. And I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm going to take a step back from that. And I, I hope, I hope it's not true to be, in all actuality, I, I hope it's not true, yeah. You I think it's going to be a separate device. Uh, you know, there's going to be like a separate option to buy it. You know, when you go to buy this new piece of hardware, whether it be the PS5 or the Xbox One X2, you're buying their traditional box. 
You're going to get that if, if that's what you want. And, of course, that is where you're going to be able to get take advantage of the HDR and the 4K60 and everything oh, else. Hold on. Alan, Alan, HDR? Alan? HDR. HDR. There we go. H. There we go. HDR. H. <laughs> you're, you're, that, that, that's why the guys on this panel, the people that are in the chat right now, we're going to go buy those consoles because we're going to want that the, 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 the real power that comes with owning the big box. But – it, there, I, it's like for me, I'm going to double dip. I'm going to probably buy the Project X Cloud on top of buying the Xbox One too, so I can put that in the bedroom. You know, yeah. instead of having to spend two five hundred dollar boxes making I'm it a thousand, you, right? I, I can spend six fifty or six hundred. I get the uh -huh. box goes in the it goes in the main gaming room, and the little one, the one that's supposed to be the size of a deck of cards, you can put you can plot that on your your cable box in your bedroom, and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that that holds a lot of water. And, you know, listen, Adam Sharpen, he says he's a traditionalist. He wants to play his games. He can't imagine playing Last of Us 2 or Gears of War 5 on a tablet. He wants to play it on his big screen. Listen, Adam, I'm, I'm right there with you. Me too. I mean, realistically, I think everyone on this panel, I think a lot of the people that listen to this show, I think a lot of people that we all correspond with on Twitter are all going to agree with that. Um, but realistically, there is a market for this portable device. Is there? And well, I, I got to say, yeah, crap. There's people How in California. We haven't seen anybody Twitter. use it, though. That's because I mean, we don't live in California. Yeah, I, I get that we don't. <laughs> I get that we don't. I'm just saying. Really cheap. Really, really cheap. Like, I mean, this. Cloud, that's, uh, you know, all you need is a good screen, functional controllers on the side, a small size for portability. And it does the rest. You don't have to put big power into these things because it's being streamed. Yeah, I mean, so crap, that might be it, real cheap. Crap! But if you could play Gears Five on a on a Switch device that's owned by Xbox, and you can take that to work with you, I I when I am I going to play at work? I work. Well, I don't, <laughs> lunch, I don't take a lunch. I, break. Lunch, I don't know. I ate lunches. I I usually um I, I I either come home or I eat Wait. and then I go back. It's not how about, like how about when a hurricane hits and you lose power for six. Well, months. I had I have a, a Vita and I have a uh, well, well, how am I going to have internet? How am I going to have internet to stream that you shit? You won't you won't be able to stream it. I, I would, uh, well, that's true. Yeah, if you can't stream it, you're screwed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, what about when you're having a rooftop party? Yeah, yes. I, I, I would never. I would kick my own ass. <laughs> if I would. All right, oh, check, this out. Ass, check this out. Crap, crap. I, I know where you're coming from, but for the the younger generation out there that it that is playing Fortnite on their Great phone point. and stuff like that right now, if they had a more powerful device that had a streaming into it, playing the games that they love from their console, bringing it to their grandmother's house. You know that I have a 15 year old, uh, you know, at home. Going to his grandmother's house, if he had that 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 piece of tech where he can bring and play his right. Xbox games over there, he would absolutely love it. So I do Are think you talking about if they have there. if they have uh something that they can a portable thing that they can stream, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was gonna say because like maybe. I mean, I I mean, I heard some rumblings, but uh, you know, they would definitely need something like that. I just don't see how without I, I something like that in the a, box, man. It's uh, unless deal. it's, it's like, an option. Apple, first of all, they don't even let Steam on their thing. So I have my doubts as to if Microsoft would even be allowed to use iOS, which takes away a big market right there. Uh, second of all, like I know everybody's no, like, I, I don't, I don't like, agree the, with the that people, crap. There's an Xbox app on iOS. There I, is, but there's no Steam app. They don't let people play their game. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Like, they would, they would have to cut Apple in in some fashion on the. They, they probably, they probably would. I mean, they cut them in. They would. I mean, it's too big and, of and a not market. just that, but but you see people. Well, is it like? I mean, I'm, I'm just. I keep yeah, saying I that market. because no, I'm saying is it is it is it is like this idea uh, oh. uh, a big market? That that's what I'm saying because it's been around for over a decade and it, it hasn't really caught on. Um, but but I would say like I see people like you know Tim Dog and and, and they go, oh yeah, I would try it. or you know on a showstopper. Oh sure, I, I would try it out. Uh, but then when you play it and if there's not a dedicated device for it. Are people going to lug around a controller to hook into your phone? Are you going to be playing Gears no, on the, the on a tablet with touch screens? I I'm don't with, just, I just yeah, don't I'm see with it. You. I'm with crap on that. I don't I'm see not, it. I'm and if you had your laptop, that, yeah. then then you would have your laptop with you, and you wouldn't right. need to stream it. So I mean, right. like to me, I get it. Like, I, and I'm not trying to shit on anybody that might want, but like I just think, especially us that are used to playing these games yeah. in 4K HD. HDR. Hey, I don't care who you are. You really gonna play a, a stream version of that? Like, I don't. I just don't see it. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I think that it's admirable. 
And I think that Microsoft is getting into it at a much better time than Sony is. Yeah. But I just am not sure that we're anywhere close to that being acceptable form for uh, the average gamer, in my opinion. Like, I could be completely wrong, and that's fine. You know? The uh, the other thing I noticed as well is in Microsoft's announcement for xCloud, they talked a lot about 4G and 5G. And, yeah. you know, that's great. But I don't know what the situation is like in the States, but data caps on that stuff is pretty limited it's like i have unlimited could... no cap brother <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. yeah. Oh, on 4g we do we don't have 5g yet we don't know if that's gonna be like here in the states right yeah. so but 5g could be that 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 from what i understand 5g i mean we talk about like rural areas not having access to broadband or uh, access to enough internet speeds i mean five five g from what i understand what verizon is trying to do could be the answer to you know getting higher bandwidth where people could do have access to stream games and and do other things remotely, um, without having dedicated lines going to their house and so forth. So that's right. That's one hundred percent. But accurate. my my question is this, right? So being wireless already puts you with some sort of lag, right? Like if you're like a lot of times when I'll game with my Xbox and I'm like, man, I'm lagging, and people will go, "Are you plugged in?" No, you know I don't. You know, like I think that's going to be you're going to have much more input lag. Why? So you're going to have the input lag of wireless, right? And yeah. you're going to like here's the thing: like where I live, it's very rural. There's one internet company in the whole area, one, right? That that's it. Um, there is you could get what's called satellite internet, which can be kind of fast, right? It's like a dish deal. Oh but yeah. The is, is there's so much latency and and jitter in that, right? So you, it's not good for online gaming. You can download shit. But you can't game on it because your ping is going to be like 600. Right. So, like, you know, any kind of like that while and you would have to have something relatively close by, even with like cell service. Right. I have at and I never have a four bar around. You know what I mean? Like it's a two bar tops. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, like and there's a lot of people like that. I know it's like people think, oh, well, it is what it is. But it's like there's a lot of quote unquote country. In the United States. Absolutely. You know? yeah, but if you're not yeah. taking the steps now today to get that type of stuff up and running, right. you'll, you'll never be there. I mean, I remember back in Napster, Napster days, it took 10, 20 minutes to download one song. Yes. And it was it three and a half. Yeah. And it was like three and a half meg. And at the time, my hard drive wasn't eight terabytes. So that three and a half meg actually took up a sizable amount or a measurable amount, I'll say, of yeah. your available space. Whereas now today, I mean, geez, if you if you download music, it takes by the time you click on the thing, it's already downloaded the song. It's done. And three and a half meg of space. is That's, for no, that's, yeah. a, great, that's a great that's, that's, <laughs> that's technology that's a, overnight is yeah. can really change and improve. It has I get what you're saying, but they would have to like just just with the way it is and like there's no competes. And things like that in the U.S., right? Like, sir, like there's only a, yeah, there, there, there is certain things, issues that pop up now. I used to have a data cap, right, up until a couple of years ago. Um, yep. It was, I think, uh, it was less than a terabyte a month or something like that. And oh, watching wow. Netflix and download, and like, really, uh, that's why for the most part I was digital very much, or I mean, physical very much early mm. on, and uh, you know. Just, just the way it is. The lack of competition is absolutely brutal. Like you need competition. Without it, there's no reason for them to get better. The reason for them to get better actually is that the internet isn't waiting for them. The internet is getting better and better, and these sites are demanding higher bandwidth just to see them because all the ads are in 4K and there's 50 of them at once, and there's a bunch of other gifts happening and stuff like. Yeah. The internet demands it, so these companies, if they want your business have to give you at least a speed that can surf the internet. Yeah, well, what yeah. I so around, will what, naturally what, just get better. What I noticed yeah. around here is they once they changed it to where you had to have a certain amount for quote unquote high speed internet, a lot of the internet companies in the country just stopped saying high speed and now it's just internet. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, guys, so 5G, from what I'm understanding, minimum download speeds are 400 megabytes per second. The only thing we don't know is the upload speeds and that's my understanding is what's, what determines you know how much latency these these speeds will have on the 5G network. Well, if yeah. you notice with with the X Cloud and everything like that, they said it, it can run on 4G, but it will also push the limits of 5G. In other words, yeah. if you if you look through the PR speak right there, it's like it might come out when 4G is still kind of like the thing. 
but 5G is when we're really going to put the right. horsepower behind this Which initiative. Is, well, Which you know what's weird is year, years ago, time. years ago, I remember hearing how by now we'd have Google uh, Fiber everywhere, and that, that hasn't happened. No, you know. there was a lot of weird well, legal issues with that. You had like a lot of people taking Google to court trying to keep it out, like the the monopolies yeah. in these towns that already right. provide that, the that place, that place was in my town. It, it was it was a mess. So they got out of it for a while. But I mean, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of companies with big money. Well, that I mean, want listen, you to be on the internet. Right, where I where I am right now, I have Verizon files. I have a gig up, gig down. I mean, that, I'm very very fortunate. Sure, let me tell you something. If I ever but, had enough where I could fucking stream, yeah. I would be the biggest thing ever. Honestly, I'd be a fucking huge. Then move, I crap! I'm telling you, you to come cannot, you cannot just pack up your shit and the dogs. I can't fucking do it. The, just, the I can't tri-state it area welcomes you, my yeah, brother. Oh, I would never here. move to New York. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of animals up here. Crap, crap! crap. Yeah. Move to the home of the Ravens. You could groom a squirrel. Yeah, you go to Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I, don't, I don't think that would work out either. Yeah, you, you, that's worse than New York. <laughs> Listen, um, <laughs> it is. I got news for you. But no, realistically, I I like what Shady said a few minutes back when he's like, you know, we 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 say this, and we got to go back to a simple. Let's talk to a simple example. Back in 2012, 2013, Crap made a point to say you don't remember, but he wasn't the only one. It was just with the, with the caps that people had. They were like, "I'm not going digital. I'm never going digital. I it's better come on a disc the rest of my life." And now all that's changed. And has it changed in like 20 years? No, five years. So now you have something where they're like, "Hey, we're gonna stream a game." And yeah, maybe it's gonna be a, you're gonna have latency. You're gonna have a little bit of issues next year when we launch it. And it'll be something that everyone's like, "This sucks. I don't want that. It's gotta have a hard wire to the back of it. I gotta be sitting on a couch, damn it!" And then all of a sudden, five, six, seven years from now, we're like, "Hey, remember when we used to complain about that? Now I'm playing this game on my lunch break, or I'm playing this game while I'm on an airplane, or I'm playing this game, blah blah blah, fill in the blank." And it, it's like right now, I mean, Switch tried to do it. We all know Nintendo's behind the eight ball when it comes to actually, like you know, having an online service and chat, and this, they're way behind. So they basically said, all we're going to give you is the ability to put the cartridge in or download it on a very small hard drive they give you. And then you can take it on the road and play that single player game and enjoy it. Um, Because playing multiplayer games, first, they don't have a lot of multiplayer games, but the ones that they do have, it's a nightmare to play that on like your hotel Wi-Fi. That's a pain in the ass with that fucking switch. Pardon my (laughs) French. Right? So, I mean, realistically, that's why I sit here and I go, okay, look, these things they're talking about, Xbox, I know you're not a big fan of it, no crap saying he wouldn't use it, and that's fine. That's fine. I don't think any of us would use it really realistically for the next two years. But five, six, seven years from now, it may be just something that becomes every, a part of everyday gaming. Like digital, you guys, we, we just gloss over it. It's not a glossing situation. Like, I mean, there was people like, shout out to Noof Nukem and, and Crap and Foxy that were like, I'm never buying anything that's not on a physical disc. That was like huge. I, I never said I'll never buy anything. You are not a big fan. I mean, not I, at all. I'm digital. still not. If I wasn't for game sharing, I wouldn't even do it. You I know just what think I mean? it's, so, like, it's become so convenient now. I'm not even, I don't game share with shit. I, and I got like, news I for you. But it's just saying, nice. Like, on P- PS4, I buy a lot of that physically. I do. Like, I, I do buy, I, 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 well, that's because I trade it back. I buy in. what I can. And I buy 4K Blu-rays. And the reason is, is because why yes. wouldn't you? You get the 4K Blu-ray, you get the regular Blu-ray, yes. and you also get the uh, digital version. So it's the best. But deal. I don't get, I don't get all that great handy stuff. I get more perks with my digital purchase on games than I do with my physical. So why all the things you just said that you get with your physical? Well, there's a difference between a digital game and a streaming game. When it comes to the streaming yeah, stuff here, I'm, guys. I'm, uh, I'm just talking physical and digital, like, that's it. Oh, that's yeah. Easy. I mean, I, I still yeah. buy, I'll, especially the exclusives, I'll buy the the physical as well now, like, but when it goes Did you down you buy the price, Forza physical? I bought it digital, but I will buy the physical once it, uh, once the price goes down. Right. And I can okay. Pick you're up you're doing that more for a collector's thing. You, you like the digital because it, it's, we've become, it's become convenient. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, for, for that, like for me, but again, like nobody uh, fries I mean, a hot dog anymore. We nuke it. But here's the thing. <laughs> like, it's right? not as even it's not Speak as convenient. Now. That, it's, it's not as convenient <laughs> now. It's not as convenient now as it was for me in the 360 where I could just put in a disc and play. Right. Right. No matter That's what, true. no matter if I get a disc now, because the, the Blu-ray drives aren't fast enough to do right. that or download. Downloaded. Look, I fucking yeah. downloaded yeah. Black Ops 4. For almost twenty four straight hours. Jesus. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the brutal. That's that's asking a lot. It really I mean, is. Yeah, I mean, that's come on. Crazy. I mean, but in all realistic, this might hurt some feelings out there, but 
the like if we're going to argue for guys that don't have 10 down in order to do what X Cloud is asking for, I think it's as ridiculous as basically arguing for the, you know, guys at the bottom of the abyss and submarines that have to be online to play some of these games. It's getting ridiculous. It is such a minority of people that oh, actually man, are we talking don't about have that the Navy again? Most Whoa. people <laughs> do have most people have a walking around roaming 10 plus that's already available to a staggering percentage of people in North America, in the States. Like it's already there, they said. That was the important part. So when they say it's going to work on 5G, I'm pretty sure what they're getting at is that's when it scales up to like 4K streaming because you've got 400 down or whatever the number thrown out earlier was. Right now they want 10. And they said more or less the majority of the world has 10. Roaming. So this is going to be a big thing for the people that want it because the audience potentially is staggering. Absolutely yeah. staggering. It so we this, can't be arguing for people that are literally out in the boonies with uh, one cord coming over to their house and 80 miles later to their neighbors because they are a small minority. That's unfortunate, but a huge group of people, they do have access. I, to this I, stuff. In, a, in, a, in a small sense, I do kind of hear what Shady's saying. I have a lot of my friends here where you can you can drive out about an hour from the city and you can be like, I live an hour and I got three acres and I got horses. And I'm like, good for horses. you. Horses. Right? They do. They, they do. They have animals. They love it. There's people in New York that have farms. That, but you have to leave like an hour and a half, two hours from the city. And it's like, and then they're like, I don't have your internet. And I'm like, no shit, dude. You left. <laughs> you have and horses. I'm like, That's, you have horses. I don't have a horse. You have something you can milk. <laughs> right? I don't have anything I can milk. Uh, well, like, here's the thing. It's moot oh because God. we have the option. So uh, as long as there's right. that option, uh, then that, right. that, that that's what and I'm saying. That, that option is not going anywhere. I, to be honest with you, I don't think they're in any hurry to cut out the people that no. do that because those are the hardcore. Well, uh, and I assume that it gets even murkier when you want to play competitively yeah. with the streaming. So because they need to double the internet. So, yeah, crap. I mean, I don't feel like music. Thing, man, I, I know they are because I bought I just got some. <laughs> 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 you have the fastest internet on the planet yeah. and still want to have an actual console. Yeah, in the house, yeah that's I want to bring this. I, mean, I agree. I want to bring this full circle here. See, we're all talking about the latency and all that good stuff and, yeah. and perhaps crappy internet connection. Uh, I wouldn't even say mine's crappy. It's, it's not crappy. It's, it's just 24 not, hours um, to download a game. Yeah, but he's got, he's well, got, 50, he's got 50 meg down. It's just that no, I, got, I got I got about 25, 30 down, but it's it's rarely yeah. ever that. It's rarely but, ever. But check this out. And, and here's the thing. So with Xbox and this whole rumor of coming out with a device like a tablet or something like that Maybe with a little hardware in there to deal with the latency and stuff is a good idea We talked about it with um the scarlet cloud, you know kind of like the cloud console or whatnot My whole thing is it better not be the only option if it's true It better not be the only option because then I'm concerned with something, you know with it bundled in with the classic system because then I am concerned with price point and, and what would they be sacrificing to keep the price point down on that bundle if that's the only option. I don't think they would do that. And again, this is just a rumor right. in, in terms of the device. But if they do that, it better be just one of those options in that family of devices mm -hmm. coming out called scarlet you know as far as the latency goes there are members in our own community both d batch from rdx and uh, predator h2o from your show there xbox that <laughs> they, they have already played just the google version right now with Assassin's great. Creed, and they're they, out of their own mouths i've heard that from other people too that no are perceivable yeah. lag they can't yep. tell if it's going through this system or if it's playing on their xbox as an example they can't tell they're gamers I'm not going to accuse them of being liars. I don't think they are. But they also so, got really good internet. They like they, really they, good internet. You, they, you, crap, they, they say sure they say you need at least people do most people do. No, dude, look up, look up right now on Google the average U.S. internet connection. It's less than 25 megabits. Well, you only need 10 for X Cloud. So well, supposedly. I, I mean, to, well, to it's work 10, it fair it's I, 10 is the bare bones. 25 is for like, a, you know, we yeah. call it premium service. Yeah. I, I, 25 I was Google. They were different. 10. It's oh, all the only number they've given out for xCloud is 10. I mean, obviously I, it'll yeah, work better yeah. if you have a right. thousand, but they say 10. Right. <laughs> hey, right. they also said that on PS Now, and I couldn't even boot that shit up. That's Sony. They're smoking mirrors. I get that, but I'm just saying. Oh, I like, thought he was gonna say they're this, smoking crack. This, this My stuff, bad. Like, I'm just saying, like there, there's a lot, and there's a lot of people that are just gonna be like, "Hey, 
I'm from the show me state. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's see what, what you guys got, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I, don't, I think there's a lot of negative stigma around this stuff. Uh, you, you know, that, that people are going to have. And, and for me personally, I'll never try this shit. I, I don't really care to, but you're if other people want to, man, no, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try any of this shit. Uh, I got, I got, a, I, I'm a 4k gamer, man. I got my, I got my box. <laughs> I got my shit, you know, I got my HDR, I got my big screen TV. I don't really want to. Well, it does yeah, make you a better gamer, I hear. It does. It does. Yeah, it does. I'm a, I'm a 4K snob now, hey, man. I can't. Oh, I there can't, we go. Uh, Shout out yeah, to Stephen Rush. <laughs> Stephen Rush goes, Mooch, I'll game share with you if you don't share with anyone. I want to mooch. Mooch's mooch games. I don't mooch is mooch. Mooch is mooch. Oh, uh, that's great. No, I appreciate that, Stephen. I, I think, honestly, I think here's the thing. I, I, I think, and I think Crap covered himself just fine because he, if it's not his bag, that's fine. But realistically, I do think that you. This is not. I don't. It's not for me. Why would I, Why would I want to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey on my Google Chrome or on a PC streaming it when I have uh, currently now three devices in the house? Four, if I want to stream it on Switch, but three uh, uh, 4K uh, options for AC. It, it doesn't make any sense. So right now, that's not really there for us. It's but I do kids, think. Dude. What's that? Kids. I said it's for kids. Yeah, it's for the kids. And it really is. I mean, like the way the kid, my, my kids primarily game on mobile devices. Yes, mine too. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's for the kids. It's, it's funny you say that because, I mean, my son, he does play a lot of Fortnite on Xbox. He does. But except for that, they're on their iPads. They're playing everything else on their iPads. And it's funny because the interest, man, I mean, it's so funny to see when I'm like, hey, you want to try this out and blah, blah. And he's like, um... No, it's all right. That's cool. I'll watch you play. Like he wants to just play either Fortnite or they want to play on their mobile devices, and it's just because that's where their friends are. And and, and, and they're the future gamers, by the way. I mean, it's not it's not yeah. us. I mean, this stuff's gonna. And that's why yeah. Microsoft and yeah. Sony and them they're they're listening to us and they realize that we're the ones that are with the wallets right now. They do get that. They get yep. it. But they also are like, listen, dude, we're listening to you. But realistically, all those munchkins in your house—that's the customer we really want. <laughs> exactly. You know. Exactly. And, and that's what it is, man. That's what it comes down to. Uh, with that, guys, we have hit two hours, and this has been an awesome crossfire. Yep, absolutely. I, I have not had this much fun. I mean, you know why? To be honest with you, so I love – you guys know I love the talk. But realistically, the the conversations, the the discussions, and the debates are what this show is all about. And every single one on this – every panel member kicked ass tonight. That is just unbelievable. I hope the audience enjoyed it. Guys, if you guys enjoyed it, not only hit the like button, but take the link and tweet it out. Be like, guys, this is actually what – this is a great podcast. We had a lot of fun tonight, man. I had a blast. It's oh, even yeah. worth re-listening to. Um, let me do this. I'll go in reverse order here. It's 9 o'clock and in New York, and I know you guys are definitely going to want to game and hang out with your families tonight and not just listen to Mooch in the panel, even though I, I think that probably is a good time. <laughs> uh, realistically, mm. I'll start with Enrique. Enrique, thank you for being on here, buddy. Honestly, uh, you, you know you're always welcome back again. I know you got a hectic schedule, but let everybody know about BRAP and where they can find you. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you know, it's, it's great to be back on a second time and appreciate the invitation and love the conversation and topics tonight. Great show. And uh, if anyone wants, to, anyone wants to give me a follow on Twitter, you can follow me at uh, BRAP, B-R-A-P underscore podcast. And uh, there'll be a link there to our uh, YouTube channel. We go live every Wednesday night at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, and by the way, um, I'm like $130 in the hole right now because of <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I like how you round it up. That was just for taxes. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, so shady. Uh, we talk about Microsoft's marketing issues. They may want to hire you. <laughs> That's the second time this week I've been told that by someone. Yeah, yeah there you go. sounds man. very familiar. I think you found your calling card, buddy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm seriously, I. Came on the show and now I'm I'm in the hole. I'm an unpaid oh. lobbyist. That is awesome. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, great. Well, Enrique, once you get Black Ops, buddy, hit me up because we all got to get on together. Um, yeah, we'll do it. Awesome, buddy. And then I've got so shady, shady. Awesome to have you on. As you can see, you got great sales pitches. You got great one-liners and good points. Let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah, man, not a problem. I am so shady on Twitter at the Sesh Empire. That's all one word on Xbox. I'm also so shady. Uh, this next week coming up is going to be a busy one for me. Every week I'm on RDX podcast with Dealer Gaming. Um, on Thursday night, I will be on the Saltiest podcast with Salty. And Friday morning, I will be on Breakfast with Boom with Boom. I'm getting around, oh, fellas. Lord, man. Yes. That's right. right. That is right. But right after the show, you're going to find me online taking names and getting victories and blackout. 
Yes, that's what I'm talking about, Shady. Good. I'm going to be on shortly, too, as well, buddy. I'll see you online. Uh, and then I've got Alan Walsh from FullThrottle.com. Alan, awesome, awesome input. And you know what? I was talking about it last night on, on uh, MNC, and I was talking about it on Xbox Nation. I got Forza Fever. The only thing that's going to stop me right now is this Black Ops, but I've been playing Forza like crazy. Alan, let everybody know where they can find you, buddy. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, we had a there was a huge Star Wars segment on the show tonight, Mooch. We gotta have the Apple one soon. I would, I'm looking forward uh, to it. The only problem is I gotta miss that one. <laughs> yeah. Either either crap's gotta miss it or I gotta wear a lot of armor, one or the other. Um <laughs> Yeah, let them know where they can find you, Al. Yeah, so uh all my social media is at Beetle Comet. The website is fullthrottlemedia.co.uk. And uh there's two stories you might be interested in on there that we put up recently. Uh I did a <laughs> recap of their huge kind of like marketing launch celebration that they did at the Goodwood Estate in England. Second article is about the fact that Horizon 4 has already surpassed more than 2 billion players, and Forza remains the best-selling racing franchise of the generation. That's awesome. Ooh, I, that's like a mic me. drop moment Great right game, there. Game. Great game. It's kind of a mic drop moment, and it's also kind of a, like a no-shit moment, because that, <laughs> game is not, it, that game's just so <laughs> goddamn good. It's so good. Um, Al, great to have you on. And then I got Senor Bombastic, who just got done with a marathon of podcasts today. And I think somehow, some way, somewhere, he'll be playing Black Ops 4 eventually. Boom, let them know where they can find you. Real easy. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Boomstick XL. You can always pop by you, my YouTube channel, Double Barrel Gaming. And real quick, Mooch, we talked about this last week. Yeah, let's bring it up, please. Um, you know, my wife and I have decided that fifty uh, percent of all super chat gained in the month of October, not just one day, the entire eight shows for the month of October is going to be donated to Making Strides Against Breast Cancer. That is the organization that my wife and I have awesome. officially decided to donate the fifty percent to. Uh, the community has responded in a fantastic way. The yeah. first eight, uh, first four shows have been staggering with the donation. So thank you for that. Uh, and we have four other shows left before October is over. And then once, of course, YouTube takes their cut, which unfortunately is significant, 50% <laughs> of, uh, of whatever the end amount is uh, that I'm going to get for that particular month is going to be donated to this charity. And all you have to do is stop by uh, any of my live shows, which is Thursday, the Xbox Factor podcast, and Friday mornings, Breakfast with Boom. And I do I do say this. If you don't want to donate to the Super Chat, I, I say that's great. I, I encourage you to go to an organization that you feel comfortable with and donate the directly to them. Breast cancer does affect everyone. Uh, my wife's mom passed away last year because of it, so this is a little bit more of a personal issue. And even though my channel is small, we are trying to do big things. Nice. And I'll leave it with that. Hey, you know? hey, boom, real quick. I just want to say that's thank you because, and I'm sorry to hear about your mother-in-law passing away, but my mother's actually a breast cancer survivor. Okay, wow. You see, it, like um, I said, it does affect, it does I tear down you. families. You. And you know what? We're right. Like yeah. my, this, this is my wife and I's way to uh, celebrate the survivors and try to assist the people dealing with it. Yo, Boom, I just want to say, as a cancer survivor myself, yes, I really sir. do appreciate what you are doing, man. It, yeah. it means a lot to see people out there taking the initiative and, and getting things done, man. No, I, I thank you guys very much. And like I just I feel really privileged to be in this position. And like I said, regardless of how small or how big, we are trying, and the community has been nothing short of amazing. So thank you, everyone that has donated. Yeah, no, that's great, Boom. Honestly, I think uh, between Enrique's uh, history with it, I think Xbox history, of course, himself personally, and myself, we've had some uh, very, very close people in the family uh, come down with cancer in the past decade, and it's 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 reared its ugly head time and time again. I'll be honest with you. I think if anybody gets an opportunity – uh, I'd like to just reiterate, please go over and see Boom's channel during his live uh, uh, broadcast. Boom, you know what else I think would be great? Uh, just for some people that don't want to, there's a lot of people who like to to donate and they don't want to have their name stretched across. Right, uh, If there's a way to, 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 to even if uh, PayPal you or get a way to get the money to you so it can go directly to that foundation. Uh, I know a lot of people that have mentioned that to me in the past. 
uh, it may be something to look into, but yes. uh, you know what? It's it, again, you know, I, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, you know, got to remember, I, I'm only a year removed from actually podcasting for the first time. Yeah. So a lot of the things that I'm doing, I'm kind of like learning on the job. Um, and you know, this is something I had, you know, I, I thought about doing, I wasn't sure how well it was going to work out, but then I just kind of just jumped in the, the, the deep end yeah. and it, it's been doing well. I think that if we, if, you know, obviously if we do this again and I'm probably going to do it again next year, I will have something set up like that. I just tried to do it a little bit simplistic because, you yeah. know, it, 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 it is again, if you've never run a show it is madness. It is, uh, especially when you know you, you're like you're, you're trying to make sure that the, the the chat is good. You're trying to make sure the topics are good. And right, the guests are there. So I, that is a fantastic idea, and I will take that into account, Mooch. Thank you for that. Awesome, buddy. No problem. And like I said, I think next next year when you do that, I'll be uh, linking up with you to help you out with that. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, like, we'll this, do something. This is, this is a big deal because a lot of people don't know this. See, my pop passed away at the age of 45 from cancer yeah uh, he died 20 years ago almost to the day and i miss him like like not uh, like like it isn't uh anybody's business so it it does affect everyone it does and, and it doesn't just have to be about breast cancer it is this particular month but with that said if you want to donate to an organization or you want to go on one of these walks that making strides for against breast cancer is a fantastic site. Yep. All you have to do is type in your zip code and it will tell you what organizations are setting up the walks. Yes. That's awesome. Boom. And you know what, honestly, if you need any help, please let me know. I know a lot of people on the panel because something like cancer affects everybody in one way or another, whether it happens to the, the individual themselves or a very close family member, it's something that needs to be nipped in the bud and, and organizations like this and contributions like what you're doing are, are the only way we know how to help the cause. So thank you, boom. We truly appreciate it. I appreciate, I appreciate you giving me the stage and, and able to talk about it. I, I definitely appreciate that. Anytime brother. And then I've got my buddy Xbot 448 who has been known as 844 occasionally. <laughs> Xbot, where can people find you brother? Uh, of course, you can find me tomorrow on my channel, which is Xbot Four Four Eight. Go ahead and sub people uh, for the next <laughs> podcast, and it is going to be a special episode. We are bringing in a new panel member. So, if anybody out there who has oh. caught the show thought we had attitude, we are about to go attitude times ten. Oh, this, this crap! This Ooh. new panel member, it, it is gonna, it is gonna be a blast. We got some really cool topics to talk about. Of course, we're going to have the gameplay going in the background for some rhyme or reason. The, the Don won last week. I don't, I don't know Mud what's going on there. Yeah. Mud, all 15 minutes of mud trucks. And that is what won. <laughs> I, 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 I just don't understand it, but I am coming with the fire, man. I got, I got some crazy gameplay and of course the rest of the panel as well. So definitely tune in tomorrow at 7 PM. Awesome, awesome, x button. Last but certainly not least, Crap Gamer Crap. Where can people find you this weekend? Crap Gamer Reviews. We'll yeah. see you later. <laughs> we're done. We're the done. quickest we're done. outro in the history of <laughs> Guys, awesome, awesome show tonight. Thank you, everybody. Guys, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Fridays, Crossfire. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Enjoying game. Peace out.